Welcome to Stay Scrunchy and Move. Yes, it's Cleveland's longest running podcast and the place to hang with your internet besties. Got questions or comments? The email address for the show is podcast at stayscrunchyandmilk.com. Crunchy, of course, being spelled with a K. Stay scrunch. You can also give us a call or message us at 216-264-6311. That's 216-264-6311. Stay scrunchy. We're available anywhere fine podcasts are, and of course, at the website, stayscrunchyandmilk.com. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show wherever possible, like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Now, stays crunchy, 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 and it was the Trader Joe's um alkaline water. And um, I had to like the blue background going, and I was impressing myself by every time I lift up the bottle of water, it just disappeared, it was just, cl- it was just disappeared <laughs> like I had, like I was drinking the moon and stars. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> Oh my God! The joy of Zoom backgrounds because I always just leave I always leave that Earth background up. I ain't trying to be. I go one. blurry. I, yeah, so I, I used to be my little blurry, but I was like, nah, man, just we gonna moon and stars for here, Earth and Earth and stars are going forward. That's, nah, that's I, just used to, I used to pick a different one every week. I had like a picture of a goose in the trash can, dude. I had. I you was know, in I got, that shit. I have a wild amount of backgrounds that I used to switch them out to be when we was early in the game, but now I'm just like, I ain't trying to be bothered with y'all like that. <laughs> kind of entertain it y'all. Does, it does something funky when I have when I wear my hair like curly. It just makes me look bald, so I'm like, oh, I'll just yeah, blur. The spots, come, the spots are come out. Yeah, mm-hmm. your, that means your hair uh, glistening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to do I, this work once, and I, I've never got to work a second time. But I had a green hoodie. And it chroma mm. keys out perfectly. Oh, so then yeah. everything worked on the hoodie, and it was like so dope. <laughs> it just like it worked like you were screen. wearing a green screen. Pretty basically. much. Yeah, yeah. So the, the random natures of work from home, people. <laughs> we also I meant to talk, we were supposed to talk to y'all, and I guess we'll we'll get to it right now, man. Uh because okay, we we are we are down a uh, Daniel today because it is his uh pop's birthday, and he owed his mom's a birthday. Because he was sick when her birthday came around. So he took his folks out to go where they wanted to go to eat. And that is, of course, Olive Garden. Yes. I recently went to Olive Garden because Xander wanted to go to Olive Garden for his birthday. And Olive Garden in December is lightweight, kind of not good. <laughs> I haven't been in so long. I've been craving it, though. But there's, the, I'd have to go to the Burbs to get to one out here. This, this, and this, so that's that's what I was telling Box. Box is like, I ain't been to uh, Olive Garden in like eight years. I go, that's about how long it's been since I went last. And maybe, maybe that's longer. an appropriate amount of time distance between <laughs> you and your Olive Garden trips. <laughs> because <laughs> it's wildly salty. Oh, no. Even the salad. <laughs> oh, no. Not the salad. <laughs> And I'm like, because they, you know, they hit it with the cheese and so forth and so on. But I, they dress and it's got something going on to going on with it too. And I'm just like, God damn, all this food is so so salty. And I'm like, and it's not that I'm not a, I'm a man of seasoning, but it's the yeah. salt is what the seasoning they went with. <laughs> a man of seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> you wash your legs in the shower. <laughs> Every time I do, I think of those who don't. Same. Like, Every time. This is not. This is not a challenge. It's just a lean down, a good scrub. And you know what bothers me the most about the fact that I still think about that every time I take a shower? That revelation on Twitter or whatever, it wasn't new information to me. I, this was stuff that I knew <laughs> from like knowing people. And now it's just every time I wash my legs, I'm like, I can't believe there's people who don't do this. Yeah, I, it, it was a revelation to me. I didn't know that people didn't wash their legs in the shower. I'm, I knew, I know uh, men be dirty sometimes. And right. I, because like, I am like, right now I'm on this wave where I'm using a, a silicone scrubber in the shower. Like, you, mm-hmm. you got this long bristle. I, man, nothing, <laughs> nothing uh, makes me happier than how smooth I feel afterwards. Like, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be giggling to myself. Let me tell you, uh, exfoliation, it'll, it'll change your life. Yeah, it's a, uh, I forgot the um the, the brand, but they sell that Target. It's a coffee, uh, coconut. Man, it smells good enough to eat. It's great. Anywho, I didn't, I didn't know any of this nine leg, um, leg day. Never skip leg day, people. Don't, don't or skip feet. leg day. Or feet. Or feet. Day. 
that's the part the the and the the person who made this revelation to the entire world via Twitter was like, yeah, the water just trickles down and cleans your feet. And so now every time I see somebody on TV, like well known actresses, and the bottom of their feet are dirty, I'm like, oh my god, she don't wash her legs or her feet. Man, this is like, how they believe Reagan when you talk about that economics is gonna get down. Trickle down. Trickle down. <laughs> they, they think they think watching trickles down, let alone dough. It's no. always super gross to me when you will be seeing a movie or a commercial, them laying down in the fucking bed with with black feet Dirty being feet. white. It's 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 that means that know. that actor in real life is dirty. <laughs> like, just didn't wash their feet. But then it's like the whole sound shade is dirty. The whole production you, is dirty. I constantly hear about the, these, uh, I don't know, maybe it's, a, it's a, you know, you push, you don't keep it with the hippies. You know what's up with them. Sometimes like these folks just like, I'm not going to wear deodorant. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. They be, they be on that wave. You know, I just. But you could still wash. For sure. <laughs> Agree. Yeah, but, but but I, 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 now go ahead. No, it's like it's this uh one lady uh used to be on BuzzFeed, used to be on IGN. I, I think she's in the independent and uh what Sid uh, Sid Goodman. And she be talking about how so much like what I would just call hippy dippy shit when it comes to like her her health and well being. Mm. I'm like, You you are an adult, you know science is real. What are we doing here <laughs> that we're just like so we just we not gonna wash. go to <laughs> wash. Yeah, it's, if you, it, it, especially if you're not gonna wear deodorant, wash. That's the point. She was talking about how much she sweats because she's looking for a dress to wear at the game awards. Mm. She's like, "Can't wear this one because I'll get wild sweaty." I'm like, "Then, then anti anti perspirant. They, they make that. They sell that cornstarch, baby. Yeah. You dress shields. You don't <laughs> even have to put the aluminum in your armpits. There are ways that you just don't have to be funky." It just do exactly. the light dusting and then put up. I don't, I don't, I know it'll probably be a little hard when you're putting on your dress and stuff, but you'll figure it out. You're an adult, like, and then you know, it'd be like a magua. You know, you can't like be kicking it after midnight, get home <laughs> because you know, you when you're gonna start getting funky. I just shouldn't have to smell other people. And lately, and the fact that it's winter time and I'm smelling people. Yeah, that's, that's that, a lot. that means they never got rid of the stink from summertime. Yeah, they have carried it with them. <laughs> Hot time, how you so musty? The city. Yeah, how you musty and it's cold outside? Because how you musty is not even ten a.m. Yeah, they always talk I, about uh, game conventions having stanky people, right? Whoa! whoa. So here's the deal: Comic Cons. I go to a game <laughs> convention here on the East Coast, and I can promise you, people on the East Coast don't do that bullshit. Everybody is a relatively, relatively at least in the game impacts are relatively clean people. Everybody seems yeah. to smell pretty pleasant, and and I, I'm, I've stood in line with people, and it's like, man, nobody seems to have the funk. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, maybe over here on this side of the country, we we have a good sense about washing up. I don't <laughs> believe don't, it. And, I just think video people. game people are not as funky as like comic book people. <laughs> Different batch. I, I mm-hmm. can see that. All the folks just out here just on the stank. <laughs> Ooh, I went to a Comic Con in Raleigh, and I oh. just, and like I have a very sensitive sense of smell. I, I'm like a pregnant bloodhound. I could smell the ingredients in your food in the microwave in the kitchen at work, and uh, that place was funky. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Hey, sir, ma'am, whoever, whoever wash, however you wash. identify. <laughs> yeah, just wash. How about you identify as clean? And we yeah. can be a little better Pam, there was this woman doing a podcast and this clip comes up every time people start talking about this. It was like her and two dudes. And she was talking about how when she showers, it's mostly just her washing her hair and like maybe running some soap under her armpits and just mm-hmm. letting the rest of it trickle down. And they were asking her about like her private parts. And she was oh. like, May- maybe once a week she hit that with some soap. Maybe. Yeah. Man. And listen, I, 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 as a woman, your particular flora and fauna, they don't allow for certain things to go inside of you. But the vulva, baby, hit the vulva with some soap. <laughs> hit it with some soap. Yeah. Like, not to get into too many details, but I remember 
Like I don't spoil the mood because of being too clean. Like I remember I had mm-hmm. du- you know dusted a little bit, but dusted the um the boys, you know. <laughs> the then, powder turned to go. <laughs> no, no, yeah. and the powder she was like, so like, what are you doing down there? I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> so it was a no go that night. I mean, all you really got to do is wash. Yeah, but I, I do. I, I I just wanted to be. I just wanted to be all the way right. You you going out? You going out? You want to be? Ain't nobody dope as you're like. Yeah, I just want to be. <laughs> but you also want to remain edible. But that truly that was twenty years ago. Twenty yes, plus years yes. ago. I'm, right. I was just getting to the point where. Um. Anybody touch me anywhere was was, was a, uh, you were like thank you thank you thank you I made it, was, it. I made it yeah <laughs> I'm grateful for your presence here thank yes. you right <laughs> wash your ass <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a it, it wasn't expected but it was just like it was a a, a maybe tonight but it yeah was a, yeah. Too much power. There's a thing that people talk about on TikTok. Their everything shower that they mm. do once a week, where in they clean their entire. I'm like, yeah, everything shower. I clean everything every day, like with the exception of my hair, because I only wash my hair like once a week. Vanessa, everything Vanessa one, explains, once a week. Explains her everything shower is basically the razors coming out. And every little yeah. that got hair on this is just catching one. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, this girl was talking about like washing things. Like, I, yes, I understand that everything shower. I do it like twice a week. It's exfoliating, shaving, and you know all that. Yeah, yeah. So I get I, I, it's levels to this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want y'all to know the white woman Wash your ass. washes her legs. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully with a washcloth. <laughs> oh, just understand. <laughs> I try, I've tried to bring a lot of a, a lot of me to this relationship. <laughs> I'd rather it be that way than you go the other way and not wash yours. <laughs> Brother, screw up. I, I hit my legs. I probably harder than I should because of that shit. I was just like, my I'm feet. Gonna, I'll just make sure. Just cut. Nah. Let me hit this yeah. kneecap one more again. Get, get back here behind. Uh, it's just. People wash your damn legs. This wouldn't even what I was going to talk about, but you see how the turns it takes. <laughs> and that's the best part. That's the best part about this shit. The turns it takes. Because <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. I guess I, I can get you started. Let's see if Nick recognizes these lyrics. Mars prepared. Here we go. Here we go. These is real easy going ones. So this and this and this and this like this ain't nothing. And who knows? You might know something about him. I'm like, oh god, I didn't know he was a terrible human being, and then I'm gonna feel terrible. <laughs> I won't feel terrible, but I will feel like I didn't do right by you. And I bet you remember these two. I got a whole name real to real. She got a buddy named SP12. Now you know the deal. We gets freaky in the studio late night. That's why the beast that you hear is coming real tight. Something to roll to. Something to stroll to. If you was a player in play the game, this will hold, this you. A hold you. More money, more money for the bankroll. Stick to the script. Don't slip in the don't st- stick to the script. Don't slip in the nine fold. A lot of fools putting salt in the game. So where these women get the notion that they run in the game, huh? I run my own, and I'm my own. I'm my own self person, which is a weird turn of phrase, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no respect make the situation worse. Feel more HP and, and Sunnydale. There's a players club everywhere you dwell. Lakeview, PH, and Army Street. A different part of town, a different kind of freak. I just wiggle my toes on a mink rug, on a mink rug, and press play on the remote. The players club. More champagne, Mr. Forte. <laughs> we are the homies with title in the club. Talk a lot of games. How we do it at the Players Club. That's Players rapping Forte. Players Club off the Don't Fight the Feeling album. And he's from San Francisco. Proper is where I read. It was what I read. That's my correct. man. So I didn't want to be. I, I didn't want no Bay Area situation popping up. It's like, what That's correct. You? Because you're over here in the field war. <laughs> I do believe that Mr. Forte used to be a um, pimp. Oh mm. well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I, that that, crack. I might be thinking of somebody else. Well, um, I think him and Sugar Free were both pimps. Mm. Sugar Free for sure. <laughs> Sugar Free, I find fascinating because every time I see him, of course, it's just like, is he? In, it's in jail, right? Mm-mm. Oh. Mm-mm. Isn't he married? I think he married some lady That's recently. The one with mm. the quarters, right? And, and rapping over it, like beating on the table with the quarter. 
Yeah. Yeah. I could have sworn when, when that video was done, he was in a uh, uniform. <laughs> yeah, but that video is like. Oh, it's way old. Very okay. old. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar Free's from Oakland. And I do believe that he like gave his life to the Lord. I'm, am I thinking of the same dude? He married this lady that Rod thinks kind of looks like me. Hold on. <laughs> Enough. Dick the oh, works no. sugar. <laughs> oh, no. One of his first Instagram posts is that Myron uh, Red Pill dude. I don't know this person's work. You, you don't want to. Fair enough. <laughs> You're better off. Uh, I guess I should go ahead and just welcome to it. It's episode 523. And that's where the random black dude. I am your host. And it's Tayro 713. Join us always by my best friends. The 216 song. Tatum. Hello. I'm here for the night. I'm glad for your presence, good sir. Yeah, like as I said earlier, you're short one lunchbox, but you get the dope guest that is what's the T famous, Crim Patissier famous, Nick motherfucking Jew. What's hood? What up? What up though? <laughs> Don't ever say San Fran, not even ironically. Hey man, I try my best to be, I try to abide by all the rules that you have taught me <laughs> over the years from Bay Area descriptions and situations. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had to come with San Fran. Where did it come from? So a, a transplant or some shit. It's like people who say Hot Lana. Oh, we don't fuck no. with it, but you know it's popular. <laughs> I don't think I ever heard somebody say that in my time in Atlanta, except for people who were not in Atlanta. So, it's the same thing with San Fran. Fair it's enough. a it's an immediate tell that you are not from the Bay Area. Is there, because I, I hear, I, I listen to this uh, podcast, uh, kind of funny, and they are in uh, the Bay Area, you know, like in Daly City or something like that. Oh, they are they Filipino? You know? And they talk about an area called Tan Fran, which is, I guess, a different area? Tan Fran, Tan Fran or something like that. <laughs> There's a plaza with that name, uh, the Tan Fran Plaza. It's a, And there's like a racetrack. It's... um. A mall, basically. It's a, it's just outside of uh, the city limits. It's like San Bruno. Okay, mm. I think that's but, yeah, Daly uh, City, San Bruno. That's all. Uh, you know, I out, do, just just outside of the city. Yeah, I think they are that that mall. Do sound like like what they are speaking to. Let's look at a sugar freeze. Let me see if I can find his wife. Who might look like yeah, Nicole? I don't, he's not the he's not the guy. Maybe I thought, or he don't go. They don't go together no more. Because um, I only see children on this. Well, I scroll Instagram. down a little further. And, There's uh, a woman in a in red, but that's yes. not the lady. Okay. that's not her. I was like, who's that lady? Right. It seems that that's not her. He seems to have these children who definitely look uh multiracial. They said, look at her belly button. Yeah, she definitely had a um, tummy tuck. That thing long, like a coin slot. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, I just did a, de- a decent scroll through, and I don't see the lady that I was referring to. Fair enough. Um, But, you know, things change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Divorce I is real, I, people. I think I might have found her. It's in the chat. That's her. No. I didn't see it either. I didn't see it either. <laughs> but I, I I was like, no, but okay. It's not the it's not the uh most offensive person I've been told I look like. I won't say Oftentimes, it on mic. Though, you'll smell saying that I can be like, oh yeah, I can see uh I yeah, like y'all, y'all Alex got, Isley. Y'all both got cheeky bones, maybe. Yeah, That's about we do it. got the we do have a similar cheeky situation. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll allow for it. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> cheeky situation. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Not uh, those cheeks. Shit, you know what it is. A uh, couple. Of, it'll be actually. It's come. <clears throat> you know, I have a little more news than you expect, but uh, lots of stuff happened. And I didn't expect these things to be happening. So you get some news. But none of it is bad news. Okay? That's good. So so you get a, you get a week of, of, of chill vibes. And then, like I said, the, the, the show becomes a, a Ants and, and Nicks. 
And then I'll come in with some amateur assholes, a little entertainment talk, and we'll leave. It's breezy, promise you. But your first story is your Ohio story this week. And I found it fascinating because I didn't know this is a thing that could happen. <clears throat> this is from Cleveland Magazine. The source I don't think I've ever read a, a story from on this program. Annie hmm. Nikoloff, Nikoloff, yeah, Nikoloff is on the byline. Buckeye Chuck, Ohio's weather predicting groundhog, now lives in Cleveland, the city uh-huh. I call home. A Cleveland Museum of Natural History ambassador named Murray is the latest creature to earn the prestigious title. <laughs> like, how you gonna be Nick Murray and Buckeye Chuck? But okay. Oh, it's like the Dread Pirate Roberts. They just pass it on. <laughs> or like the we, Pope. We will have six more weeks of winter or an early, will we have six more weeks of winter or an early spring? We'll have to consult Buckeye Chuck to know for sure. And that Buckeye Chuck now lives at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. A museum we simply, we literally just discussed last week. His aunt was with it, there with his children. According to CMNH news release, a museum groundhog who is actually named Murray earned the prestigious title <laughs> of Buckeye Chuck, meaning that he'll become the state's not so certified meteorologist looking for his shadow on Groundhog Day, February 2nd, in a few short weeks. Buckeye Chuck is basically Ohio's own Puxatawney Field knockoff, starred in Marion, Ohio in the 1970s. Murray's la- just the latest animal to hold the title of Buckeye Chuck. CMNH has had Murray since June after he was injured on an, uh, on an Ohio road, according to the news release. He couldn't be released back into the wild, so he now lives at the museum's Ralph Perkins II Wildlife Center in Woods Garden. Not only does Murray have a safe and nurturing new home, but our guests will also have a chance to learn from him. So it's a perfect pairing, says CMNH Director of Wildlife Jim Nimitt in a news release. In his new home, Murray will be able to train for an iHeartMedia Groundhog Day official prediction on a voluntary basis, according to a news release. (laughs) A den and platform have been introduced into his habitat for enrichment. Murray will choose to participate on his terms, just like he does for educational programs at the museum, Nimit clarified in the news release. If he sees a shadow on February 2nd, Murray predicts six more weeks of winter, and he predicts early spring if he doesn't see his shadow. It's a tradition that's taken place for nearly, for roughly, forgive me, 50 years now, started by Marion WMRN radio host Charlie Evers. In 1979, Buckeye Chuck earned official status when he was named Ohio's weather predicting groundhog by the Ohio General Assembly. Can't believe that happened to be a thing. Evers died in 2020. In recent years, the Buckeye Truck tradition has shifted from some of its hands-on history following the coronavirus pandemic and a complaint from P- uh, PETA, because, of course, oh, um, oh, the complaint oh, oh, called oh. for hosts to cease exhibiting groundhogs in stressful environments where attendees reportedly pet and handle the animal. According oh. to a Spectrum article from 2022, last year, Marion did not use a live groundhog on site at its Buckeye Chuck event. There's more to it and so forth. So, but hey, word to Buckeye Chuck is uh, uh, actually, there's only a little bit left, so I might as well finish this article. Simon H. Handlers will take Murray to Marion for the town's annual WMRN Buckeye Chuck Day prediction and celebration, which takes place 7 to 8 a.m. at the radio station studios at uh, 1330 North Main Street. Whoa. Murray won't be handled at the event, and he will have the option to willingly walk on a platform for the prediction, marking a departure <laughs> from past hands on Buckeye Chuck events. The prediction will also air live on the radio and Buckeye Chuck's Facebook page. Find more uh, information about the event here. There's a click right there, and you can do that if you're so inclined because the article will be in your show notes. They, they I definitely seen people to show up. Do, at least my man Pucks and Tony Phil, and obviously how they've done Buckeye Chuck in the back. They just reaching there with a man with gloves on, snatching his ass up. A man, like, with white y'all gotta... a man with white gloves. Yeah, but I like, bruh, leave them damn go. <laughs> groundhogs, woodchucks. Whatever you call them in your neck of the woods, be it's snatching the motherfuckers up. Those men are extra classy. They had on white gloves and top hats. They, they should be able to handle a little bit of Chuck, a little, a little bit of beef, uh, not hey. beef, uh, a ground. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, this is a story that I've been seeing go everywhere. But what I didn't see anybody do was go back to the actual article that sourced it all out. And so, of course, I did because I'm that dude. So this is from the good people of Food and Wine who actually come up twice in this show. Fruit Stripes Gum. It's oh. gone forever. R.I.P. Yipes. Jalissa Castrodell, Castrodell on the byline. If you call yourself an older millennial, I don't know who you're marketing this toward, but come on, bro. Come on. Whoever gonna be who gonna be eating fruit stripe butt gen X? 
get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Quit forgetting about us. <laughs> yeah. Then you definitely grew up with fruit strike gum. Gum. It's wildly erratic <laughs> zebra mascot. And the brightly colored sticks of gum with bold fruit flavors that lasted Whoa. almost as long as it took you to read this sentence. Almost. <laughs> However, according to Fruit Strikes manufacturer, Fer- Ferrera, yes, hmm. those guys, candy, the gum is being discontinued. That's big news to anyone who didn't think it was discontinued about the time Hannah Montana went off the air. Wow. We, have, we have made the difficult decision to sunset Fruit Stripe gum. But consumers may still be able to find the product at select retailers nationwide, a Ferrera candy representative said in a statement. The decision to sunset the product was take, was not taken lightly, and we consider many factors before coming to the decision, including consumer preferences and purchasing patterns. Hmm. Some fruit stripe enthusiasts had noticed that the gum was becoming harder to find in stores lately. When I go to the store, I'll look for the gum to no avail. And the only place I find it is online. One person wrote on r slash candy, which man, Reddit really goes deep, don't it? RIP fruit stripe gum. The first official news of its imminent disappearance was posted by oldtimecandy.com. So actually, mm. I could have even gone even further if I had a dip, dip, dove even deeper. We are sad to announce that. Really? Wow. We are sad to announce that fruit stripe gum has been discontinued by the manufacturer of the site, wrote. We are disappointed too. One disbelieving redditor even spoke with a Ferrer customer service representative to confirm that the brand is being disc or uh, sunset it mm. before learning that yes, it's gone for good. I mean, the gum had zero flavor. Like as soon as you took it out the wrapper and it hit the air, the flavor <laughs> went away. You chew that fruit stripes, you probably get about three bites, solid mm. bites. And then yes, it was time to spit it out. Not that it's not just it lost its flavor. Sure, flavor. It's texture changed. It became greedy mm-hmm. and gross within mm-hmm. moments of you chewing it. That was not some stuff to kick it with for a long while. But that's why they make the pack so big. Yeah, mm-hmm. they really did try to get you uh, your money's worth. I, I, I can never say to the contrary. You know, I can't give you that many chews, baby. But you can have round after round. <laughs> Just keep taking us, keep swapping out the place. So it's a real intense flavor for about four or five chews, and then it just becomes gross and spit it out. It it hey, and that commercial something. was great too. Yikes! Yikes! Stripes! Right. Fruit stripes! 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 I'm, I'm a millennial. How? What year were you born? 1981. You are. Oh, yeah, you just crossed over. You are. You are indeed an elder millennial. Yeah. Word up. Word to you and yours. And you was born smack in the middle of the year, so it ain't like you can even like, yeah, like, like nah, nah. You was over this way. You got created over here, whatever, whatever. Like nah, man. <laughs> yeah. Um. Like um. But I'm a, a millennial, but. I have a sunrise moon and um, <laughs> Eunice was breaking that day. And, you know, it's a lot of, you know, more complex stuff about it. Going going down with it. Who, what is this y'all say? Whoever put this link in? Uh... That's my doppelganger. Yeah, I can see that. Much more than a sugar freeze lady or whatever yeah. the, the relationship is. That's, I don't want to. That's Ernie Isley's daughter, Alex Isley. She's actually a recording artist and her stuff is really great. She's on the smooth, mellow tip. Respect it. Where's it, Isley? I often will post her in my story just so that, like, my godmother <laughs> and other people will be like, they will like it. And I'm like, because <laughs> I'm a chaos coordinator. <laughs> Double checking. Like, hold on. I don't know about this one. All right. This last one, y'all, it, just, it takes a little bit of a dive. Okay. So I'll be on, I'm on TikTok. I come across this story. I'm going to play y'all the TikTok audio so y'all can hear it. And then I was like, what the hell is going on? How, and so questions became questions had to be answered after I saw this after I saw after I saw this TikTok. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna push play, and then I will will we'll go get on to the story that I had to go research after. Twenty parents because they have got a Christmas dinner deal, all for fifteen pound that will feed a family of four. So let's go in and let's go and get it. Right, so you can choose out of the following: you can have the turkey joint with stuffing, 
or you can have a honey glazed gammon joint by themselves one is 7.99 and the gammon is 6.99 so we're going to choose the turkey you can also choose yourself some stuffing balls roast potatoes yorkshire puddings carrots cabbage sprouts and bacon and your pigs and blankets and that's all for 15 pounds and also as an alternative as well they do have corn as well so amazing deal <laughs> we're going to grab it all and i'm going to cook it up in fact you actually don't even need more than that gammon joint the way i was like what the fuck is a gammon joint yeah because I'm, I'm, I think I'm pretty versed in my English, English, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like, I looked up the word, and, and then, of course, the good people at Food and Wine had a whole article re- regarding this very matter. And I was like, oh, thank the maker. <laughs> and normally, yes, this is KP business, but you know what I'm saying? We got, we got Team KP in the building, so it all works. Again, this is from Food and Wine. Uh, it just says Food and Wine editors on the, on, on the byline, so it must be multiple writers on this one. The U.S. and the U.K. way to say 15 food names. So we're gonna, it's just a list. We're going to run down the list. Of course, aubergine is. Great. Uh, not grapefruit. Eggplant. <laughs> a courgette is. A zucchini. A oh, almost said a cucumber. We be knowing. A coriander is. Uh, uh, cumin. Cilantro. Mm, cilantro. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't doing it right. Muesli. Granola? I thought muesli was Granola. just muesli. Oh, okay. Yeah. Arugula. You remember what they call arugula? Oh. No. Yeah, Rocket. No. All right. Oh, man, yes. I think I like that better. I'm like, yeah, let me get yeah, some I'm, over I'm there. switching that out. Uh, biscuit, cookie. Fries, chips, crisp, you know. Jam or jelly or jello. So there's a, you know, they're like that. Sausage or banger. And I'm like, ah, they don't really, I, I, some things are bangers, but they do say just sausage. We've heard it too much. Mm-hmm. Shrimp, prawn, hmm. ice lolly, popsicles. Ice lolly. Yes, I have. <laughs> wow. But this the one that fucked me up. Gammon. Remember, a gammon joint was how we got here. What do you think a gammon joint is? It's got to be something sweet because it's a lyric in a Corinne Bailey Ray song. Hmm. Gammon is ham. Oh, no. She said something else then. (laughs) England's gammon evolved from the French word jambon or hamon. Or the jambon. Yeah. yeah, J-A-M-B-O-N. While the United States derived the term Ham from the same word in Dutch in the German ham H A M M E mm. both refer to the same preparation of pork, which you'll find in sandwiches and holiday centerpieces in the U.S. and pie in yeah. England. Plus, the Irish jam bone ham bone is a ham mm-hmm. and cheesy pastry found throughout the U.K. Gammon or gammon joint in this case, and I think that's just the one with the bone. Yeah, ham, you know. Yeah. So, like I said, that TikTok took me on a whole world of exploration that brought me to this article. <laughs> and of yeah. course, like I said, I know my English English pretty well, so none of these, but that one, I was like, what? <laughs> the, the lyric she said, gamine, which I don't know what that is either. How's it spelled? G-A-M-I-N-E. I mean, a young woman, attractive, <laughs> boyish, a picture of featuring a gamine young model. And the lyric is, you had said I was gamine, but we didn't mean the same thing, I think. You, you, had, hmm. you had said I was boyish. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Look at us all out here learning our English hmm. English. Hmm. Constantly on the grind. That's what we do out here, people. But those were your news stories for the week. Like I said, it's kind of fun. All of them uh, relatively in, 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 in good news. I brought you no bad news this week with the intention of not bringing you bad news this week. Because last week was a lot of some bad news, so... Relax, revive. Now hand the reins over to Anthony. So right, well, first up, as always, it's continue, continuing to make this a food, um, a foodish um, episode. I have some on my mind and on my heart. What fast food restaurant do you guys not go to? 
it's it's in your area. It's just not in your rotation. It's a Burger King like right there, mm-hmm. and I'll never go to them. <laughs> Every, also, it's a rallies over there, and I don't go to either. But that's just come on, who really going to rallies? Somebody <laughs> has to because it's open and they never yeah. been closed. You know, they don't even look at like it slowed down ever. So somebody yeah. is going to rally. Bur- but- yeah, Burger King is going downhill. That um, that one near you seems like a ghost town often. Um, but rally, man, I won't. Eat, I won't eat nothing else from rallies. But every once in a while, I gotta have some of them fries. And the mm-hmm. store bought fries aren't the same. Fair. I um, I used to I, since I lived in the city I don't really eat fast food because there was nothing by me and I'm not like I will jump into the car to go to McDonald's maybe like once every other month um, but outside of like Chipotle I'm not really eating fast food there used to be a, a Burger King that I would that was close enough to me but I don't even um, like Burger King like that like it's just. I don't have like a a moral objection to Burger King. It was just if I had my druthers and there was something else, I would definitely get the something else. But like, I haven't really eaten fast food regularly in like six years. Nice. I don't like Burger King as well, but since they have a um, the Impossible Whopper. Um, mm. and like no other restaurant, well, no, no other fast food restaurant has like, uh, uh, Carl's Jr. or Hardee's or whatever has one. Cause my mom goes there all the time. Yeah. Our Hardee's closed. Like we have, Uh-oh. um, we might have some other ones in Northeastern Ohio, but like, I know it's one in Akron that just opened up, but the one near me, um, closed, like we'll be back soon and they ain't been back yet. <laughs> so that was the issue with the Burger King. They they couldn't keep staff even during the pandemic, and then even after the pandemic, and so you go there and be like, "Bruh, this is not fast food at this point." I could, but we could have had a sit down, and uh, the vibe is not <laughs> vibing right here. And then like uh, one of the little boys that uh, uh, Xander I went to school with, graduated with, was working there for a little bit, uh, just right in, like the summer after he graduated. So whatever that was. And I remember seeing him like, oh, what's going on, man? And he's like, oh, I'm good and blah, blah, blah. And it was like him and another dude running the entirety of the restaurant. I'm like, nah, I can't. <laughs> like, no wonder y'all can't get that done. Worked to Demetrius. Good, good, good lad. So, <laughs> like, he went to school with Xander from kindergarten to 12th grade. They, oh, wow. They the, the whole ride. So, that's always my little homie, man. So, but, yeah, man, they just, uh, they wasn't, they couldn't keep it together. Just three things, three, three things, two things. Two things on Big Burger King's menu I bang with: the long chicken sandwich, the oval joint, my guy, and the Hershey pie. And that used to be uh, a, a, a young pothead's uh, go-to. We would get, <laughs> we would get buttered up, and then go to Burger King and go get the go go get long chicken sandwiches. They was always like, they used to be like two for four. And they had them like in different flavors. They used to yeah, have one Italian. with yeah, like the Italian. Joint. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. The new that, chicken sandwich ain't bad from Burger King. It's not bad in the in the in the chicken sandwich pantheon. It's not bad. So me and Anthony both tried it multiple. I think on multiple occasions to make sure it always tastes like it's fried in dirty oil. Oh, and well, we lived on two different sides of the, of the, of the two city, different coasts. And, if, and, if, yeah. and, and it tastes that way <laughs> on his, and it tastes that way on mine. Then I know that that's actually the sandwich itself. Or they all just got dirty oil. Dirty oil. Dirty mm-hmm. oil. They probably don't change that shit. It's yeah. fry oil. Yeah, I, I seen a, a TikTok um, the other day where it's like uh, you take some cornstarch and water and make a slurry and then put it in an oil and it'll clean it up. I was like, that that shit's still old though, bro. Like, yeah, <laughs> just change the oil. Yeah, you, and the you just effort got all the you used to, yeah, the effort you used to make a slurry, you could just change the oil. <laughs> The, the speaking of rallies, my first job, job job was rallies, and this one time I had to change the swap out the oil, and I didn't put it back together right. Oh no! So we go to pour the oil in. Come on out! I flooded the entire restaurant in oil. Damn! So the, the work we had to do to get that cleaned up. Oh, I can't even imagine. And having to tell everybody that came through, like, I'm sorry, we don't have French fries. Which, like Anthony Ooh. just said, I'm going to a restaurant. For your French fries, what you mean? Yeah. You got French fries. Yeah. Sorry, 
due to the situation, we currently don't have French fries available. What? No, I'm, just, I'm like, look, man, I'm not going to fight you about it. <laughs> I ain't got French fries. You can you can get this big, big Buford or or you can't. And I mean, keep it moving. Which one is going to be? And uh, yeah, that was a night. Was terrible. <laughs> but I'm sorry also, that happened. feel good about that situation. I was instructed poorly. And they and nobody was real shitty about it. It was like, all right, because apparently maybe maybe somebody else has done it before. And so we basically had to like powder the whole floor with whatever to to soak up the oil, sweep all that up, then mop the shit out of that floor with hot ass water and soap to try to you know cut through all that oil. But that floor was always gonna be a little slick after that. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it truly always felt a little like whoop, whoop. Man, you conditioned <laughs> the hell out of that floor. <laughs> that was a VO5 oil treatment but at least I know we regularly change the oil at that particular location at that period of time do they do it nowadays I have no idea the chicken sandwich is the move well actually I want to try because uh, Shake Shack just announced they got a Korean fried chicken sandwich oh, I'm yeah. like, oh, I need to try but hmm. the little move is because Popeye's is simply ir- unreliable <laughs> Man, in the in the in the pinch, let's go hit up KFC. They they spicy chicken sandwich is pretty good. I uh, realize that I don't really go to Popeyes much anymore because DC is a wing town, and I would rather get chicken from literally the grocery store than Popeyes at this point. But if I if I really want a chicken sandwich, I'm gonna go to Popeyes mm. for that. Yeah, now, I can't recall, and you, you you tell me if I'm uh, the the proper pronunciation. Is it mambo, as in dance, or mumbo sauce? It's both. Oh, um, and I don't know what the difference is, but some places it's M U, and some places it's, it's M O, and I really don't know why. But the more common is mumbo. Only only mumbo sauce we ever had was uh, Ted's, right? I mean, you might have had somewhere else, and you've been down there a couple a couple times without it, me. It was at, at Tez when we tasted yeah, it, and, and, I, and I and, and I have no idea, and I have no idea if that is a that is a, a proper representation of said sauce. So, uh, I would say the best place to get some some mumbo sauce is at a Chinese carryout. Hmm. Over there, where uh, what is that? Sport theater where Lincoln got popped, right? Uh huh. So look, look. It, at least it was. And like I said, I ain't been to DC since the last time we saw each other, Nick. So it's been a minute since I've been to DC. Um, it's like a diner that was over there that may or may not be there, and they had it on a menu. But it was like I was eating breakfast. What I gonna do some bumble sauce? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> The internet is saying it's pronounced mumbo no matter how it's spelled, but oh. M A or M U are the variations. Oh. But the D C people will tell you that it is mambo with with an A, but it, I don't know. The internet is saying it's it's pronounced mumbo regardless. And that's probably that, that 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 makes sense. I don't think I've ever heard anybody hit that mambo, <laughs> but I just know it's spelled that way, yeah. so my brain is of course gonna leap to the dance. <laughs> it to me it tastes like um like ketchup and Dr Pepper hmm. with yeah, some it, with it, some spice in it. It is a it is a, it's a very it was a very sweet sauce to me. Uh, I've seen it where it's like it'll be like nuclear orange, mm, and I've yeah. seen it where it's a deep darker kind of reddish brown. So yeah, it's like, like at the at the curry out at the Chinese curry out, as they say it over here. It's it's going to be a little bit more fluorescent and day glow. Hmm. Just, but in other places, it looks more like ketchup. Yeah. Did you try McDonald's? Yeah, and to me, it tasted like it already had chicken in it when it was too spicy, in my mm, opinion. Fascinating. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't love their, it. Uh, they, had, they had like spicy something else. Cocktail going sauce? No, oh, no, no. no. They, they, yeah, yeah. They had the, uh, what is this, like a spicy jam, spicy, some shit like yeah. that there. They had a that bowl. hottie sauce was good as hell though. The uh Megan the Stallion little collab, the hottie sauce. Yeah. They need to bring that back. No, yeah, yeah. When they was doing when they did their mumbo sauce, they had a, a little spicy jelly jam. Oh, yeah, I only I only tried the mumbo. Yeah, yeah. It's rather too tasty. And it only I felt like it only worked with McDonald's nuggets. Like I dipped my pang in to try the French fry. And mm-hmm. I'm like, those things don't work with the chicken nugget. They work together to bring something out. But that's, that's what, a that's another thing I can I can put on the list like 
I don't really fuck with McDonald's, but when they got a new pie, I'll try it. And every once in a while, I'll have a hankering for those nuggets. Yeah. Like, I'm, like I said, not a, not a big nug guy, but every now and again, like, it'll just. Nest Boss on just, the other yeah, day. Yeah, something about and, that pink goo. Well, that's the thing. So I know they don't use the pink goo no more. So I kind of got right. over that. <laughs> right. But I like, just call it. What's, what's, Nest what's Boss the controversy the of pink goo? It's, breast, it's supposed to be breast meat, right? So lean yeah. breast meat is pink. No, no, no. It was like a it was real pink? lab cre- lab created paste. Like it was a slurry. It was it was definitely it was a slurry and it's basically just like uh it was they so they would say rib meat, whatever, whatever, chicken rib yeah. meat. But you've seen chicken ribs. Ain't like there's a lot of meat to be had on the chicken ribs. So basically yeah. it's all the <clears throat> gristle, everything just broken down into a slurry. And which yeah, was so- what they do is, like, when the machines are coming through and they're separating the chicken, they take the real meat and they blow it hard, real, real hard out. Like, yeah. uh, and um, and then they just got a whole bucket of it. It's yep. like I don't know the video I saw. That shit did not look like it came from an animal. It was literally <laughs> pink, like Pepto Bismol pink. Well, you're right. Yeah. It didn't come from an animal. It came from seven seven thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to be uppity about it because I literally eat chitlins and hot dogs. Mm-hmm. But for the after I saw that video, I did not eat a chicken McNugget until they said they don't do that no more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, like it's it's a lot of those videos. My like my uncle's always sending some whole tip ass videos on Instagram. Like, look at this video where they take Coca Cola and they cook it down for an hour. You made caramel. Of course, it's brown caramel. What is you doing? No, nah, the pink goo was like on 60 Minutes or some shit. It was like a huge expose. This I, wasn't like a Facebook situation. I, I remember it. Like I, I, I'm just not as grossed out by it as um, as you are. It's, it just seemed like um, I mean, if you look for, too far into anything, it's always going to be some shit like for real, my dude? Is this yeah. what we doing? Most definitely. I mean, I ate the McRib. I'm, I, it was just something about seeing them pipe that pink shit that I, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm good off of those for a, a, a little while. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put this as your alternate title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, I, I never had like a, a true official McDonald's McRib, but I definitely had a, a McRib S sandwich at, uh, at school from the cafeteria. Um, I I don't know which one would be better, but um, I remember having that rib that riblet patty at school inside the foil tray. All right, so this story is from the Standard. It's from 2014. Uh, McDonald's releases a video to banish pink slime in burgers myth. Oh, uh, McDonald's has launched an online campaign in a bid to to, to banish myths. Its burgers are made from pink slime. The world's biggest fast food chain plans its targeting in U.S. customers that with a video starring former host of Myth, Mythbusters, uh, Grant Imahara, got rest. Uh, McDonald's also addresses images and videos showing its burgers staying intact after several weeks or years. The fast food giant says it's due to food being dehydrated and the food needs moisture to form and food needs moisture to form mo. Uh, OK, so they're saying people was doing some shady shit. Uh, the company also uses the film to respond to other questions, such as does McDonald's beef contain worms? Didn't realize that was a question hmm. uh, in which the reply says no gross end of story in a segment showing Mr. Imahara touring a factory. He asked, are there lips and eyeballs in there? Jimmy, <laughs> who ag- explains that the patties only have beef trimmings. Ooh, what, is, what does that mean? Trimming? <laughs> Another guy says the patties do not, con- do not contain lean, finely textured beef and mm. ingredient widely referred to as pink slime mm. that became the subject of controversy in the past. McDonald's stopped using the ingredient about three years ago, so it's not like they wouldn't use it. They simply right. stopped using it. Ben yeah. Stringfellow, Vice President of Communications for McDonald's USA, said the campaign oh, man. is a new way of engaging with customers more directly. He noted people are demanding for more information about products across the board, not just from McDonald's. In many ways, it's the way the world's going, he said. So, they say they haven't been using about three years. Was that when um, Brian Cox yeah, started doing those ba 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 commercials? Were they know. talking three about the new beef? From twenty fourteen, so what are twenty? Well, you know, that was way after then. Yeah. Okay, so pink slime wasn't even uh, the chicken nuggets. 
it was the burgers what they're supposed to have been. That's wild. I just remember that, and I remember somebody leaving out a McDonald's meal, like just out yeah. for like a year, and it didn't rot. And that's the one they said that that they 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 think, or at least argue that that it, it would have had to have been dehydrated. Yeah, because moisture just would have caused mold at some point anyway. Yeah, I'm like on the bread at least. Yeah, man, we all just learned. Feel good but about well, that. I've I've not gone to McDonald's yet this year. I will hold off on that as long as possible. <laughs> hey, yeah, along with the, it's just like how it is with, with kind of like with, with Jordan with me. It's like one, I had them. Two, the quality isn't the same, and three, the price is up. Like. Every, they make it easier for you to be like, you know what I can do? Instead of going to McDonald's, I can make four burgers <laughs> and buy buns. Better and every- than McDonald's? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Well, on- well, onions Eddie and peppers Murphy. in them. Yes, yes. With the bread turning into pink dough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what else you got, Ain't? Um, How about this? Well, because, you know, not necessarily fast food, but I like to revisit this every once in a while. What would be your super meal? If you had to go to three different places, I'll say four. You can you can pick a four course meal. A proper Frankenstein. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Definitely a Mexican pizza. Oh. Can I bring back a menu item that no longer exists? Yes, this is your fantasy. Okay, so a Mexican pizza, the little drum, the drumette wings from KFC from back in the day. Do they still have those? Sometimes. It depends. The little the little wings. Yeah, the wing dings. The fried ones. Yeah. 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 Uh and then like um the Burger King fries before <laughs> they fucked them up. It's like and two fries egg, back, right? Right. And yeah. like the eggnog milkshake from Jack in the Box. Oh. And maybe some jalapeno poppers from Jack in the Box. Man, the eggnog milkshake is something I truly miss from McDonald's and I'm sad they don't seem to, they don't seem to come through with that no more. I love eggnog on a level that probably is unhealthy. So I got my last eggnog in the fridge right now, and I had to. I was like, I looked today. I was like, I probably should probably go ahead and drink this because uh, <laughs> when we got like about another two weeks on it before it said before it's Best Buy date, it's two weeks out because I got it like probably like New Year's Eve. I probably don't know if I've ever even had eggnog because milk as a whole I don't bang with, I but you. it's something about that eggnog milkshake from Jack in the Box, man. Every year when it was eggnog milk milkshake time. <laughs> So it's the season of the milkshake. Man, got me I, homesick. Let me see if I was. Oof. I don't know if I had to whip up a meal. Hmm. I, I truly, truly enjoy a, uh, a, a, a what is it? A, 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 a cheesy gordita crunch. I never Ch- had that. What is that? Chicken, of course. Oh, it's just a Taco Bell. They, but what's, a, is it like a, a, it's a taco wrapped in a somebody else's shit in in in, in the, the unfried chalupa shell? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I never so, had a chalupa either. Oh, oh yeah. man, yeah, they like go I said, hard. I don't love every place, but every place I have a menu item from, and mm-hmm. the chalupa is um is like one of those things I'll have a craving for every once in a while. Yeah, hmm. yeah, the cheese gordita crunch, of course, with chicken. It's always swap chicken. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, there's nobody's fries that I'm in love with. I mean, not anybody. So, yeah. I would suggest you hit up Sheets or um or Get Go and get an order of fries and tell me what you think. I, I've had, fries I've, are good. Yeah, I've, I've had I've had both their fries and they I, the the consistency is something to behold yeah. because like no matter where you because since they got I mean I'm sure every place has the timer but. But it seemed like they'd be like, hey, hey, timer, we 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 time our shit. We won't be fucking around. Yeah. We really we really follow it. Uh, I think Shake Shack and Canes for that matter, they they use, you know, just uh crinkle cut joints. 
And they're fine. They're, they're a tasty fry. But of course, like I said, look at that. That's both both them make them. I, I made crinkle crust fries from the bag and tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like you like steak fries. I can appreciate them. Mm. Yeah. I never made a potato I didn't like. I don't think yeah. there's any form of potatoes that I don't like. I think that's what it is. It's like it's like mm, I, I don't eat McDonald's fries. I, I will every now and again. I'll be like, give me two, give me like three of them fries. I try not to eat them because, a dad because they, you know, they hit them in that dang, uh, yeah, that dang uh, lard. lard. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're they so good. I, before they even get there, so I'm like, and they're only good when they like hot. Yes. And so it's like, but I ate, I don't think I've eaten a box of McDonald's fries in a very long time. <laughs> so, and I don't eat their hash browns, nothing like that there, because I, I know it's the same deal. So I'm just like, nah, right. So none of that. And like I said, I don't like Rally's fries or nothing. Like I have, that's because I had many a Rally fry over my life. So I don't know. All right. So Cheesy Gordita Crunch is all we got so far. Baja Blast, because that's just what it is. All times. I'm glad it's back the whole year this year. They celebrating 20 years of Baja Blast. You can go get it, go get it from the shops. So that's what's up. <laughs> so that's always on the menu. Uh, Hershey pie, like I said, from uh, from my uh, uh, from Burger King. That's just like I said, that's pot It's bullshit right there, but it is what it is. So, um, man, I get I guess no no real size that kind of stick out to me. I don't know, Aunt Rummy, Aunt, hook me up. What, 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 what? Well, put it together for me. If I'm starting with a drink, I'm getting um, the half unsweetened tea, half lemonade from Canes. Um, <sighs> then I'm gonna hit up. Um, I'm gonna go back about seven years to um, to KFC's on um, potato wedges. Uh, Come on, those was <laughs> so good. Um, what sandwich? Um, if I'm a, like, like I said. Get Go has a sandwich called the Buffalo Loaded Sandwich. Yeah, it is a uh, ranch bread, um, buffalo dip, um, chicken tenders, and uh, buffalo sauce with cheddar cheese. I'm not going to even get a big one. I'll just get a small one because I'm, I'm going to keep on moving. Um, those wing the the I wouldn't get the honey barbecue. But I would get those um, KFC wings and buffalo sauce. So I'm just going to be uh, all hot all night. Um, and um, Oh, shit. Bring back the snack wrap from McDonald's. <laughs> I changed our answer. I want the Mighty Wings from the 80s from McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Mighty Wings. They were so good. <laughs> When they brought them back not too long ago, they weren't bad either. They weren't bad, but they weren't they weren't the eighties ones. I remember my grandmother didn't go to McDonald's, but when the Mighty Wings came out, she's like, "These Mighty Wings, we we could go to McDonald's like official for a while." Wait, Mighty y'all Wings remember Chicken Littles from KFC? Yeah, yeah. And then they brought them back, and it was like not the same. <laughs> yeah, because after because when they were chicken littles, that was legit a piece of chicken and on, on a bun. Mm-hmm. When they brought them back, it was a chicken tender like a on nugget. the bun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, hmm. convenient, convenient gas station chicken that from that from that particular little Chet's over there in uh, Ridgeville. Swear by it. And they JoJo's are good too. Yeah, I, I miss. Um, I, I know I talked about this before. Um, in our giant eagle, we had an old lady cooking the chicken in the back. And when that giant eagle, was closed, good. oh man, it was so good. She whipped that pressure. No, it was she good. Wh- uh, whipped that pressure uh, cooker. Yeah. <laughs> the grocery store by me, they got the best chicken. They had some nuggets the other day and they taste better than McDonald's. It's the same idea, same shape, same seasoning, but just a little bit more on it. Nice. Yeah, like I don't like whole I know I, I feel like Whole Foods took like the whole um uh food bar from the hood grocery stores. They took they stole mm-hmm. that idea and made it nasty. And upcharge it. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it, it didn't it charge you too much, but like I um oh, Another thing, right, this will be my last thing. I remember when Wendy's had the salad bar, and like, oh, Art Carl's Jr. used to have one too. 
Like I used to get in trouble. Like I order the fries and then I go to the salad bar and sprinkle that <laughs> sprinkle that real cheddar cheese on my fry. And then like, like you man, yellow that. Wendy's, yellow Wendy's is goaded. Yeah, the OG mm-hmm. with the with they had the little solarium. Oh, you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. you let the sun hit you while you were drinking a frosty. <laughs> Y'all have Safeway? No, no. Uh, well, no, no, no. Because Safeway was. It's like it's levels of grocery store that you had to go through to get to what what it was, but if I get up to upstate New York, they kind of got a Safeway ish situation. Their fried there. chicken is good too. Where, man, I had John Eagle fried chicken recently enough, just because I was just like, I am not cooking this night, so I just uh-huh. bought some fried chicken and uh, no, it's just it's fine. It's just not what it was. It, it's not like like and Heine used to have good fried chicken, but yeah. um. It's nice to be able to be like, you know what? I'm not going to cook tonight. Let me, it, it would be nice to have like a good meal every once in a while. We went to um, out, out back again and got yeah. the uh, the family meal, which they like lied about. That shit ain't, that shit went on no $30. No, you keep saying Outback. You mean Texas Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know your ass is not going to no, no damn Outback. I know you're not going to Outback. Yeah, the catfish at Texas Roadhouse is excellent. It, it is and uh, excellent, man. Like I, because they fry it with cornmeal too. It's uh, a corn be- cornmeal mix. It's very good, and that tartar sauce is good too. It's not like and is like when you you go to most places, it tastes like pudding. Like I do not like a sweet ass tartar sauce. Like <laughs> no, this is it's this kind of zesty. Yeah, it's I don't like know what they put in it, but it's delicious. Oh mm. yeah, okay. Add to my meal. You can throw me some of them damn uh, Long John Silver's hush puppies. <laughs> Cause them motherfuckers be crackulating, right? In my jam. Don't give me um, too many of them um, crinkly shits at the bottom. I'm, I'm... I love you know they set them separate. <laughs> they do. Yeah, you can buy just some crinkles. At least you could in, in recent history. So I remember the first time I seen this, I was like, "What is this? Yeah. What, what yeah. is this unholiness you put on my plate?" <laughs> Maybe some <laughs> battered and fried up nice. You are gonna enjoy it? God, long time stories is this. As long as I said it was criminally slept on. It's only I think I've had it they, once. they here. The ones that are here yeah. are here. And they got a pineapple cheesecake. Oh, yeah, they do. Whole fucking fruit in my cheesecake. But there's you good. Come across a long John Silver's holler at them. Change life. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I definitely had long John Silver's in yours. And I mean, uh, we counting some time. Definitely yeah. pre-pandemic. But that one over there up, in, up close to Dan's house is still there. Yeah, I, open, so. I've been. I went there like I think last year. I went there one time. Yeah, so maybe. What's up? Thank you, Aunt. Now I'm hungry, and I already ate. I had Chipotle <laughs> for dinner oh. tonight. <laughs> I love me some bird chicken from Chipotle. Eating Chipotle, and that's because Vanessa live on Chipotle. We and Vanessa are the same chick. Because oh, one God. thing I'm gonna do is eat me some motherfucking Chipotle like three <laughs> times a week sometimes. <laughs> And they messed up my order, but whoever order I got, I, I kind of was like, oh, okay, cool, this ain't bad. What, what new twist did they have on theirs? So I typically get a bowl with chicken, white rice, no beans, fajita veggies, corn salsa, pico de gallo, uh, cheese, lettuce, and sometimes sour cream. They got chicken, black beans, um, corn salsa, and sour cream, lettuce, cheese. Hmm. So it's just the addition of beans to the measurement? But no uh, fajita veggies, no pico. Okay. So I, I had ordered a guac and chips, so I yeah. threw some guac in the bowl, and I had some olives in my refrigerator and threw in just some, like, paste picani sauce, and so I turned it into, like, a black people taco bowl. <laughs> um, and then because of Keith Lee, I always get a tortilla on the side, so and we, I make oh little God, burritos. Y'all, y'all really are the we, same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I make little burritos with it. That's exactly what she doing. I don't know if she picked it up from King Lee, but she does that. And they have that chip, the, the vinaigrette dressing. I found a dupe for it mm. at the grocery store, so I don't have to order it. I can just get put some in there. So sure. this was a creamier bowl than I typically like. There's no no crunch to it, no veggies in it, really. Um, but it was all it wasn't bad. 
Yeah. You know, a Chipotle burrito bowl will last me like three meals because I only eat half of it. Then I rip the tortilla in half and make two little burritos <laughs> while I'm eating my, my bowl. All right. Well, here we go. This, this, this is where we all kick it. <laughs> Man. Mm-hmm. That's some clone behavior. <laughs> Girl dinner. <laughs> well, thank you again, Ant, for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Nick, this is when it becomes you. And do it do it what you will. This is yeah, your, I gotta give you a statement topic. name. You don't oh. hear enough. Yeah, but I got a little something. So your Christmas tree in the background. Um reminded me that I wanted to talk about the twelve days of Christmas. I actually did not know that, what that was. I just thought it was a song with a bunch of animals and things. But actually, so I was born and raised Catholic. I went to Catholic school until the fifth grade. My brother went all the way through high school. I officially left the Catholic church when I was about 19, almost became atheist. And then I became like a non-denominational Christian when I was about 20, 21. Um, so there are some deep Christian Christmas things that are specifically Catholic that I, I don't know about, but there are some things that I kind of know about. So the, when people leave their Christmas decorations up super long, like sometimes it's just because they like it or they don't want to take it down, but other people are doing it because, so the 12 days of Christmas is the period between, uh, the birth of Christ and the presentation of the Magi. Um, so the January 6th is referred to as the epiphany or like King's day or three King's day. You're supposed to take your Christmas decorations down by three King's day. And if you don't do it by then, then you have to leave it up until Candlemas, Mm. which is what I learned new this year, which is February 2nd. And it commemorates the occasion when the Virgin Mary in obedience to Jewish law went to the temple in Jerusalem to be purified 40 days after the birth of her son, Jesus. So if you if you are a practicing Orthodox, usually Christian, and you've less, left your decorations up past January the 6th, you cannot take them down until February 2nd. Mm, wow. I mean... I, was I learned take, that this year. I was probably going to take it down Dr. King's birthday because I had a day off. So, you know, <laughs> right. <birthday>. But, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always it, down for letting them stay up until uh, till uh, uh, you know Groundhog's Day. Where the right. fuck I so, it, so it's uh, 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 it's to ward off evil and death and and assure prosperity, which is just what the Yule log was for. Yeah, and that's all the Christmas tree is just representing the Yule log. It's so much stuff that 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 is you know Catholic, pagan that is definitely <laughs> pagan. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like. And it's just cause, like to say the church is like, look, man, I need y'all to get down my set. So I'm sure mm-hmm. keep your dang traditions. We're mm-hmm. just going to tweak them a little bit, freak them just a little bit. I mean, that's what they're doing now with same sex marriage. The Pope is like, look, we are blessed. We just won't call it marriage. Man, he was cool, Pope. And he was like, I can't fuck with surrogate mothers. Wait, get the yeah, fuck out of here. What's that? That, that, he wilding on that. Yeah. I'm like, sir. And that's, I, I don't know, maybe he maybe he's of the mindset that you know, all surrogates are, are equal, but it's like, what if your sister, what if your sister just want to carry your baby for you? Cause you can't. Right. I mean, in the Bible, you was marrying your brother wife. What's, what's so much different about this? <laughs> but I, uh, have, I'm still watching Christmas movies because, um, this is our last good year in this country I, and I heard on you earth speak on this uh, yeah this uh, i'm 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 dead ass <laughs> i'm uh, honestly no no matter which way the election goes we're fucked because if because already that orange man is planting the seed to his followers and they are just accepting it as fact that all of his legal woes are because Joe Biden is uh, out to get him and preemptively committing election fraud to make him seem ineligible to hold the office of president. So even if he loses, his supporters are not going to believe that it's a, a factual loss. Which, yeah. So th- and I'm just, not saying we're on the brink of civil war. We just but. gonna it's, the bullshit just gonna cave for these. Like I said, these folks ran up on the Capitol and then run to pretend that they didn't run up in the Capitol when we yeah. had them on tape running up in the Capitol. And they got people like Jason Whitlock saying it's not an insurrection. 
uh, which is part two of what I was going to talk about. So like Cat Williams, he, you know, blew up the whole comedy industry. And uh, then Stephen A. Smith blew up all of sports entertainment yesterday. Did y'all hear this? I saw some of that rant. It was. Bruh. I, I never heard him cuss so much in my life. Oh, bruh. <laughs> so like, I do not fuck with the fat phobia and calling people fat as pejorative. Like that part, you could miss me with a hundred million times a day. But he was going in on Jason Whitlock. Um, so I have had Jason Whitlock muted to the gods for the better part of about six years. I don't even know where he works, what he's doing. I don't hear the shit that he says, whatever. But apparently he says some shit to piss Stephen A. Smith off. And he started it with a tweet like, I'm going to go. I'm finally going in on that fat bastard. He, he tweeted. Whoa. So then on the Stephen A. Smith show, which is just on YouTube, he spent an hour eviscerating <laughs> Jason Whitlock. So after I watched that, I had to go see what Jason Whitlock said about him. And on what I, what I learned on today is that Jason Whitlock and Stephen A. Smith are the same age. I have not seen Jason Whitlock in maybe seven years. This man look a smooth 72. <laughs> <laughs> you see what happened when you don't when you don't act he's aging like an avocado in New York City. Mm. He looks crazy. Gotta wash your legs, people. And moisturize and drink your water. And stop being a coon. Yeah. Rod talked about the coon unity today, and I cannot stop laughing at that word. <laughs> None of them fuck with each other. That's what he was talking about. Why don't they join? Why don't they join into a coon, coon unity and start their own little network? Because nope. they have, they all got to be Highlander. They, they exactly. They always got to be the you know, you're not like the other ones. And so right, exactly that, that's how they want to get down to get down. And so they they will never be like, oh well, why don't we unite? And yeah. Black conservatives or whatever they want to call themselves. Conservatives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at the coons. Uh, all coon puns are great, in my opinion, in, in every iteration. Uh, so if you can find like a 35 second clip of it, it, it would be fantastic because he went in. So Jason Whitlock basically said that Stephen A. Smith fabricated portions of his biography and he called him a plant he was referencing the Cat Williams interview, talking about how Cat Williams said Kevin Hart is an industry plant. He said the same thing about Stephen A. Smith and how he's basically a shrill for Disney and, and corporate America because he's pliable and will do and say anything they want him to do. And Stephen A. Smith was like, I've had it. I'm let I'm letting the chopper spray. <laughs> well, again, I don't know Jason Whitlock like this. Smooth 72 is doing uh, oh, no, smooth. That's because that, that is because uh, here I can we, we'll just we'll quickly share the old screen right quick. Hold on. I can I can tell you why we don't get uh, any Jason Whitlock in my life where I clicked on his name. Oh that's yeah. a long oh, yeah. time ago that must have happened. I've, and this and these photos are good photos. You have to take a, a look at him on his YouTube show from today. So he put this thing of like 15 things you have to believe in order to be a shrill for the medium and the ant and the woke agenda. And one of them was that January 6th was an insurrection. Okay, so my dude just wild. I'm trying to see if I can find just a clip of Stephen A. Everything they got is like long, but here, this one is like here, this one is. No, he, they've been blowing him up on Twitter because he like he was like, I reached out to my pastor and apologized in advance for the words that I'm going to say. Like, he went off. <laughs> here, man, go delve into his uh, his Twitter. Destroy Jason McGlock. Here's why he deserved, deserved it. Sports media reacts to Stephen A. Smith's rant on this. Well, okay, you're right. Strongly and then here, this is a um, recent photo of Jason Whitlock, who I thought I had blocked, but apparently, oh no, I do have blocked. I don't know why he showed up. 
Oh, here we go. Three minutes and 36 seconds. That's kind of long. Well, we'll let's do a little tidbit of it and we'll stop when we need to. Yeah, that man. Uh, here. He look yeah. old. Uh, this is like 21 seconds. All right. Let me get that. Uh, oh, that just tried to open a whole new iris. Wowzers. Mm. <laughs> Father God. That that was wild. I'm glad I didn't go any further than that. And then this one is three and a half minutes. All right, let me get the little shorty. Again, I'm going to click play. Let me just thumb me up if y'all hear it. And if y'all don't hear it, I guess you were saying, here we. You betrayed me. Did you tell the folks that? You bitch. <laughs> Did you tell him? You fat piece of shit. Did you tell him that? Got the names. We got Jamel Hill. We got Howard Bryant. You want me to bring up the other writers that would have? You. Yeesh. All right. Let's get this. So, like, every reputable <clears throat> black person in sports media were like, Hunter, a hundo, agree with everything Stephen A said. Uh, he tried to poach all of us for what is now known as the undefeated, and everybody absolutely said no. All right, let's 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 give this three minute one a little listen. And please do not allow this to be a reflection on my character because this is not how I act. But I mean it from my soul when I say this is the worst human being I've ever known. I don't know of another human being worse than Jason Whitlock. He is a piece of shit. (laughs) He's the dude that's going to have a funeral and ain't going to be no pallbearers. Might be two people to show up. He's that dude. He is the absolute worst. And he lies. And he incriminates. And he tries to set people up to fail. To big up himself because he can't do it on his own. He had a television show. He failed. He's had opportunities one time after another. He doesn't measure up. And now he's coming at the big dog. And let me tell you something right now. I am the big dog. I ain't the only one. I ain't the only one. There's plenty. Skip Bayless, apologies to him too for bringing up Jason Whitlock's name in the same sentence as him. But we all know what time it is. Everyone knows. All the executives at all the networks, they know what a piece of shit he is. <laughs> and they begged me not to do this. But even my pastor, A.R. Bernard, said, I'm not happy about it. But every now and then, we got to do what we got to do. I promise you, and last to my sister, Carmen, I won't do this again. I promise oh, you. this the end. I know you cringing. You didn't want me to do this. I'm sorry, sis. It was necessary. Oh, wait a minute. This will be fun. Let's, let's play this version of it. And please do not <laughs> allow this to be a reflection on my character because this is not how I act every day. But I mean it from my soul when I say this is the worst human being I've ever known. I don't know of another human being worse. It just I makes it better. Jason. Yes. Yes. He is a piece of shit. <laughs> that shit is scrumptious. He's the dude. Man, Ether really changed the way we do things. All right. Yes. We actually happen to have a little bit of context from Mr. Whitlock. Let's see if it actually plays. You don't play. We're spinning. We spin it. We spin it. I don't know if it's going to play. Maybe it doesn't need to. Maybe I shouldn't be giving this motherfucker a platform. So we yeah. just scroll right past Stephen it. A said it's written in his writer that he will not appear on a program with Jason Whitlock. That's crazy. Like green M&M's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, 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 what's his name? What's his name being in the, having to be in a dress if he gonna act next to Cat Williams? <laughs> God, uh, uh, Ricky, Smiley. Ricky, Smiley. Uh, Ricky Smiley. Ricky Smiley. Yeah. So Stephen A got the people going today. Man, I just maybe I just went on Twitter today, which is quite is at this point 
It was actually yesterday. Today okay. was the day that I, because I didn't want to watch the full hour from Stephen A. on my phone. This needed to be a television situation. So I watched Stephen A. show on tel- on on YouTube on my TV today. Yeah, yeah. He went in. <laughs> I want to see what. And I don't rock. Let me let me be clear. I don't rock with Stephen A. Majority of the time of the shit. Like even in that rant, he talks about being friends with Sean Hannity and he was supporting Pat McAfee. And I don't rock with that like at all. But we do have a common enemy, and it is Jason <laughs> Whitlock. <laughs> Jamel Hill responds. My ask, did she see what Stephen uh, what mm-hmm. Stephen A. said? And her response was, "I did." Stephen A. told the truth. Old oh, boy tried to recruit a bunch of us to do some work. For what was then the undefeated? Oh, you just said that, and we we mm-hmm. didn't want to work well. So there you go. Oh, wow! Then they show a picture of Stage Sage still getting her hair felt by some white dude. What? Because she fuck? jumped in it too, and she said that what Stephen A. did was unprofessional, and so everybody started calling her all flavors of manners of coons. Mm. <laughs> I feel for her because she's wants everybody to know she's biracial and she's phenotypically black and it must eat her alive how black she looks and she has to walk into every room and scream that she's white. Hmm. Uh, we don't know is wild. Nigga, uh, Morgan, Morgan P. Campbell wrote a thread on Twitter about how awful of a person uh, Jason Whitlock is and how he tried to poach him to go work for him and offered him less money than what he was making. Talked about the opportunity would make up for the money. <laughs> he's always want to make opportunity as, as actual cash. Let me click. Let me see what this one is. Let's see. Call Eric Shanks and Charlie Dixon at Fox. Mm-hmm. Call Jimmy Pitaro, Burke Magnus, Dave Roberts, Norby Williamson at ESPN. Call him. Call him. Call John Skipper. <laughs> and Metalock Media. I'm giving you names. <laughs> I'm giving you names. That's just a, I already gave you on air talent names. I gave you reporters and on air talent. Who are these niggas? <laughs> oh, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> we need to stay away from these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I love that clip. It's Tommy Davidson at the Breakfast Club. <laughs> oh, Mr. Morgan P. K. I know I follow Morgan. He, I, I'm almost positive we follow one another. I guess we do. There we go. Like I think we follow each other. That's a mutual. Let me see if I can find his little. Yeah, Morgan's a stand-up dude. Like if uh, Morgan saying you ain't shit, you ain't shit, bro. Right. It's just like the 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 levels to which because because Jason Whitlock used to be a respected sports journalist. I used to read his shit regularly because he was smart and had things to say. And then he just took this turn and like it. I don't know which which is worse that he actually believes the shit that he be saying or he just says it for the check because he yeah. knows that being a black man who speaks out against the black community pays bills. And, it's, and, I, it's, and they're and, equally awful. Yeah, it's, it's equally awful, but it's like the latter is is probably what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like it, this it, insurrection shit, like... Yeah, that's that's a real rando, uh, you know, hill to die on, my guy. He's transphobic. <laughs> like, he's awful. He's awful. And that's why he looked like a aging banana right now. <laughs> Stephen Stephen A was going in on him being fat, but he also was like the fat talking about that he was unsuccessful on TV, but he was like, and he's not uh, particularly easy to look at. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I didn't realize how drastically he's aged in the last ten years. Yeah, that's what evil gonna do. Mm-hmm. We know it. Let me read you a few of uh, Morgan's uh, posting this little thread. Uh, Whitlock spent the like like eleven months recruiting me for the undefeated. So, like a lot of black folks, sports media, I have some Jason Whitlock stories. Won't share them all here, but I will say this: that man tried to lure me away from a good job by offering me a seventeen seventeen pay cut, not a raise, not a raise. We're talking about a pay cut. Paraphrasing him: less money, but a big opportunity. Paraphrasing me: big opportunities at big companies come with big money. They didn't get Ishiro to Seattle by offering him less. 
Come on. I figure Whitlock would be a bad boss and might have taken the job if it paid a a bad boss bonus. I know all the all about bad bosses. I spent a year working for John Filson. I don't know who that is, but apparently he's a bad boss. I just kind of want to look him up and see where he was at. My man did most of his work in uh in Canada. So uh we gonna search John Filson for later. Uh, <laughs> uh overall vibe. Uh, the black people I knew at ESPN weren't interested in working with Whitlock and the rest of us were willing, weren't willing. And the rest of us were willing to stomach him at the right price because he had managed to secure the key to the gate that led to ESPN. But 0.83 to, uh, X salary wasn't the right price. So there you go. <laughs> he was not to be paid right. Jason Filson. Uh, let's see. The only there's multiple Jason Fields to come up. Many of them seem to be people who sold sell hot tubs. The one seems to be a real estate agent. Hmm. So I don't know who the Jason Fields that he speaks of is, but <laughs> there you go. But uh, fuck you too. Oh no, former for, former former Toronto Star editor Force. There you go. Oh, there you because go. Because I because I, uh, Morgan used to write for the Star. Uh, used to be mm-hmm. sports uh, gal at the Star in Toronto. So that tells you who that is. Ah, oh, let's check this story out real quick if I can. I don't know if I can. I think it might be one. Oh. Yeah. Uh, forced <laughs> to pin self-defense on newsroom tragedy. Former Toronto Star editor Jason Filson broke his silence to, uh, today on the suicide of star reporter Ravina Aulak. Owl- I don't know how to pronounce that. The end of Filson's relationship with Aulak was cited in her note as an article. Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You see why he's a terrible, he's a terrible boss. Woo, oh, fuck. Bre- breezy. I uh, don't know if I fully appreciate this uh, <laughs> trend, trend, I guess the term phrase I want to use, of uh, black podcasters uh, getting their clips popping. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it was, it, 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 and Rob was 100% right when he's when he talking about this, man. The reason I was like, so I guess enjoy cat uh, going off like he did it's because I, di- I don't fuck with a lot of dudes he was riding that he was talking about right so i was just like yeah i can easily be like fuck them dudes because i kind of wouldn't fuck with them dudes to begin with you know yeah i don't really fuck with cat williams like that i've never seen one of his stand-ups and every time i've seen him on an internet on an interview there's always these like you know viral moments of him like clowning somebody the part of the i thought i found the interview very entertaining i don't care for shannon sharp whatsoever i think he (laughs) at his big age he's red pilled and pushing that fucking menaced bullshit and i think it's despicable like he is the worst interviewer on earth but cat is a layup as an interviewee it's very hard to have a bad interview with him um and then it's like now we are rewriting history because of the shit that this man said in an interview. Like, I don't care who wrote the jokes. They were performed in a manner that was very funny to me. I don't go up for Kevin Hart. I've never seen any of his stand up. I don't really find him to be funny in very many movies. But on the whole, I took it as an entertaining thing. You can't sit there and say, I'm not homophobic and then push many homophobic tropes and, and have me to believe that you are some sort of ally. Yeah. Yeah, and, and maybe that's the best he can do with his allyship. That's as I far as I don't believe him to be an ally whatsoever. Yeah, you can't yeah, say yeah. harmful shit and uphold harmful st- stereotypes about a community and claim to to be an ally. You can't. You know, I'm not homophobic. Okay, but then I'm gonna say a bunch of homophobic shit. Bunch of homophobic shit for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like I said, can't 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 bang with a with with a lot of a lot of whatever like that. But I like that everybody felt the need to come out and be like, wait a minute, Cat Williams, or say what <laughs> Cat Williams got right and or what Cat Williams. Not why he was saying Cat what what he got wrong, which is kind of interesting. Ice Cube would just be basically right. like, oh yeah, I, we did have Ricky Reese some sides, but he ain't I sure didn't he listen didn't to that. It's funny. Somebody said we would rather watch three hours of Cat Williams than nine minutes of Ice Cube. Hmm. Was, I will a, say that, yeah, it was a TikTok video. I, so I was just like, here, I'll, I'll listen to you, uh, O'Shea. Yeah, ahead, no, I don't listen to anything O'Shea has to say. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, I will say the things that have been coming about about 
out about Cat Williams that are positive are really great to hear. Like a yeah. bunch of comedians talking about how he's put them on and like how he's used his resources for good. But like, I don't know, you you wincing at men in dresses, but no one's ever seen you with a woman ever. You have seven adopted children. You've never been in a public facing relationship with a woman like we could we could do the same assumptions about you so like everybody who's uh, is uh what do you call it successful sucks dick the only reason why you're not as successful is because you don't suck dick that's homophobia <laughs> bake right into it so yeah it's like I said they, they, this this weird thing of of of, of like i don't know Let's make it. Let's let's cut something out. That's gonna get us. Well, in that in that case, it was three hours of that shit. What what has been normally just you know saying somebody cutting something out of a show and then giving you no context as for it. It quickly has become like I will give you three hours of that same thing, and they like, well, hell, let's let's everybody watch that. So I'm just like, I don't know, man. But I'm also always hating on on motherfuckers. I saw somebody read uh, a name of the asshole that I know we did on the show. <laughs> Like mm-hmm. views. Every single time I see some motherfucker with hundred of thousand views for shit I know I did already, I'd be like mm-hmm. just angry. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I think that like it's like one of my followers called it like the Kendrick control verse. They had everybody coming out. Now the thing about the Kendrick control verse is that they had niggas in the studio, so get on get on your Zoom. Uh, y'all better get together a comedy show and, and prove y'all funny. <laughs> And like I said, I I I, I think, and Spike said, I want to say Spike said it's on TikTok. I, I think uh, I think Ludacris just caught a stray, <laughs> and he responded with yeah, a verse. With a, <laughs> and they're like, you know, Ludacris mad because <laughs> I heard Ludacris rap in like ten years, and I was like. Yeah, he has been quiet on that in there. He regard. responded to something else pretty recently with a verse too. So I think it's just like what he does now. He'll yeah. pop up and and I listen, if it get the people active and get the these people on tour and writing new and performing new material, let's do it. I'm all for it. Yeah. Just get pull, pull you out pull you out to, to get you on it, man. So that's yeah, fascinating. All these things. Kevin Hart think? left his friend to die in a ditch like miss me with that dude <laughs> wow what is that about look up that car accident he was in oh i do recall that yeah okay no in general again i fuck with kevin hart in like the 40 year old version <laughs> I, I don't even like him in that i like him in that about last night remake i don't know if i ever saw it so there you it's go. really good and i think he's only good because he's seen partners majority of the time with regina hall there you go he's it's great, actually if you can find it streaming i would highly recommend you watch it like this weekend it's um michael ely, michael ely mm-hmm, joy oh. bryant kevin hart and regina hall there you go get your homework people Man, it's, it's probably on Tubi. So. Tubi got so much good stuff on there. People be clowning I Tubi. Need, I need to get in there. People be clowning <laughs> Tubi for the for the like the for the Detroit um core movies. But I found a pup called Scooby doing there tonight, and I'm like, you won Tubi because I've been looking for that for years. Like, I had to peruse the Tubi. Like me and me and Spud was like been like we've been talking about that for years. So like at first it was on on Boomerang. But you still yeah. had to pay for the other three seasons of it. Oh, Boomerang! That thing's still a thing. Mm-hmm. It, like it's like it's a standalone on the TV right now. Uh, but nice. man, talk about being pumped about like the littlest thing. Like just hearing that Scooby, a pub <laughs> named Scooby Doo. <laughs> like I was, mm-hmm. I was over the moon, man. Like I let them watch TV today, and today was a Thursday. I let them watch the episode of that. So it's what it is to be parents, people. Sometimes you got to be like, "No, nah, man, you can't get down with this." <laughs> Holy smokes! Thank you, Nick, for walking us through a through through through, through the, 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 the Whitlock uh, mm. situation and and, and 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 giving us some perspective on, on on Cat Williams and the like and so forth and so on. And well, just in general, thanks for being here, of course. But you know how we get down. Yeah. What what can I tell you about T's life? Officially got my rent increase. I was unhappy about it. 
Oh no! Here's why I was in college. I had about it. Here's what you're right. Because he dude hit me up first. He's like, "Oh, it's gonna be this much," and I was like, "Bro, that ain't shit. I give you that now." Right. Two hours later, I was wrong. Uh-oh. Uh That's for the uh, apartments in the back. Your rent Mm-mm. is going to go up four hundred dollars. Son of a bitch. Mm-mm. And then, of course, because Anthony is always right, and is always. And Anthony has been saying for a while now, it's my time. Yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. Yesterday. So this is like maybe two days after I've, I've, I've learned about rent increase. Vanessa had applied for a job and had a real good interview uh, some months back with a company that just was like, hey, man, you made it to our last two candidates. We just went the other way. <gasps> that same no. company called her back yesterday and was like, hey, that guy didn't work out. You want to work for us? Oh. And uh, immediately, and I mean immediately, hired her. And nice. she starts, technically she started today because she had to do a bunch of paperwork and shit, but she starts Tuesday. And, and had to quit the other job today because she starts Tuesday, which left her in a state. But it is it is a substantial, substantial pay rise. The new and, gig uh, wasn't working out? What's up? The new gig wasn't working out? No. No, she's fine with it. But like I said, these people came out of nowhere with the bag. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Well, there you go. Well, there, well, there, and that's what it is. And then what, what really makes me laugh about it is like you'd have to be in her line of business to understand it all. But her line of business, she used to work on, let's say, this side of that business. Now she's mm-hmm. going to be on this side of that business. But mm-hmm. people who still work over here is like, Yo, we heard you about to be over there. We are so excited because we get to work with you again. Oh, and nice. I'm like, oh, okay. And like, she sent me multiple te- from different different companies and different people at different companies who are like, I am so excited to be working with you again. So from the song, I love that. And like the the her new boss is like, oh, you so they know you in these streets. Like, yes, they know me because I'm well known and I'm good at what I do. And so, like that, and I mean like that. <laughs> nice. So I'm like, okay, bang with it. She will probably, have, not no problems to it. She will here in, in the very near future have to go out of town to go do some uh, in-office training. And, uh, but she will be uh, near my mama. Oh, so nice. she'll probably get to go kick with mama for a little bit while she's out of town. So that's pretty dope. And uh, yeah, just, there you go. Aunt, always right. Aunt said it's my time and I just need to quit worrying about it. And I've been trying to be on that shit, it's, brother. It's easier said than done to not worry about it. But like, it's, it's it seems like when you when you're on the right path, things just seem to fall in line, and that's just where you at right now. Like, um, hey, like it's it's about to be well, shit. We've had a very mild winter, but it's gonna be spring soon. The like the housing market is gonna pick up. Um, it, it, it's your time, man. Just keep on thinking positive and positive things happen. It is my hope, and I'm going to resign and, and, and abide by it, good sir. So thank you for that. Thank you for always being supportive of, of, of me in these situations. And so there you go, man. It's, it's yeah. They they finally raised your boys' rent, but let me tell you something. Still very cheap compared to every other place around here. I should be paying a whole lot more for rent. And I can't even be mad that 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 after living here for 16 years. Mm, let's see. No, Lee will be 17 this year, so maybe. Even let's do the math. The math's right quick. <laughs> That's crazy. I've never lived anywhere that long. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a bit of a yeah. vagabond. And, and and as was I for the longest time, but then of course I had, I had kids, and I was just like, we got to settle. And then uh, we, you know I got divorced, and I was like, well, I'm probably about to move because you know, I got divorced. But then like a few years later, she passed away, so I was like, I got to keep my kids stable. So we'll just keep on keeping on. And so I've just been here since 16 years. I just did the math. 16 years wow. of, of on the eighth of this month was uh, 16 yeah, years. Because so. I remember wow. when Lee was born, when you, when you guys moved downstairs with the, the nice apartment with the washer and dryer in it. Yep, yep. yep. We, were in, we, lived in this, we lived in this apartment complex up the way from us, Nick. And uh, we just had Santa, but then we, you know, we were pregnant with Lee. And uh, so we ended up getting the bigger part. They have bigger apartments down on the first floor. So we got one down on the first floor, a bigger space, and uh, stayed there for about 
six months, seven months, maybe before I was like, the kid gonna need. I'm saying because at that point it was saying leave a small and breastfeed, and so they could be you know in a, in our room with us. But I'm like, at some point they gonna need a room. A and room. So we got a mm-hmm. good spot, and I found this spot, and yeah. <laughs> Oh, nice. I walked in and I, I had to send you a picture of this. It. It's a fireplace over here. And I walked in this house and I saw this fireplace. It don't actually work, but it's just this gorgeous fire. Still to this day, it's like, I think it's one of the prettiest things ever. And I was like, oh, yeah, I got to get this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, again, I've now been here 16 years. It's the longest I've ever stayed anywhere in my entire existence. And uh, the fact that sooner than later, I'm going to have to move. Not have to move, but I'm going to want to move. Like I said, yeah. because I want my own home. And uh, once I got going in that direction, but then got kind of steered out of it, because like I said, Vanessa lost a job and then, you know, got found a job and so on and so on. Then I was just like, nah, but I'm kind of was already on that road. And mm-hmm. I know my credit's good and I know I got a good rate. Although I just found out you probably shouldn't be. Never mind. We'll talk about that elsewhere. Mm-hmm. But anyway, <laughs> it's not for everybody's ears. It's for other people. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> Once I found some stuff out, I was like, okay, so we'll tweet some things and mess around with some things and so forth. But yeah, man, uh, it ain't it ain't glorious, but it ain't bad, people. And I, mm-hmm. I and I and I love that for for I love that for it. So that's what's on the crackulating in T's world to get you up to date. Let's leave all that be, and let's go on over to Reddit. For each week, before shit was sweet, <laughs> I was reading them and assholes. <laughs> And discussing if we thought people actually were assholes and or not. I have three pull for you this week. Uh, let me know which one y'all want to ride out first with. Am I the asshole for not agreeing with my roommate to never have sex in our dorm room? <laughs> oh. Am I the asshole for telling my mother-in-law if she expects me to get a DNA test from my son, then I want her to get a DNA test from my husband. <laughs> Yes. Asshole. <laughs> Am I the asshole for refusing to give my sister access to her teenage son's money? Hmm. Oh. That's you want interesting. To you want to start that one? An interesting one? Yeah. Let's go from there. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for refusing to give my sister access to her teenage son's money? Hi, everyone. I need your judgment on a situation involving my teenage nephew's finance. My sister and family overall have poor money management skills, and my nephew recognizes this. Mm. Ask me to control his money for him, since I am more responsible and manage my money well. He values responsible financial management, and after discussing with him, I agree. He's only a junior in college, but he's earned a decent amount of money through the little jobs he's done here and there, as well as lifeguarding in the, on the su- in the summer when he needs money for something. I give it to him. A junior in college, that's a grown ass man. Yeah, unless he's unless he graduated early. And I mean I, I yeah. guess it's possible, but yeah. Uh now recently, his mom, my sister, and her husband somehow bought a house way beyond their means. Mm. I, I really don't know how they got approved, but now they are drowning in bills and consistently behind. Mm. My sister and that's not a word. Reverly? R E V E L R Y. I'm going to go with recently. That's just, I'm going to say, yeah, that V and S C right next year. The recently call her son in college and ask him to give them what he has so they can cover oh. some bills. Oh, no. My nephew, being the honest kid he is, he actually told them how much money he had saved, mm. upwards of 5K, and they wanted all of it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He. he <laughs> He said no, because he's saving this money for when he graduates so he can buy a car or maybe move out and start his life. My sister then forcefully tried to go to his bank and demand money be withdrawn. Mm. Oh, no. But she was denied since I'm on the main. I am the main account holder. My sister called me and insisted I transfer her the money because it's her son and she has a right to that money. I stood my ground and said, no, it's not fair to take from him and what and from him and what he's worked for especially since I know for a fact they won't pay him back. My nephew offered them a compromise of giving them 1K, free and clear, but they want all of it, and I refuse to release release it as my nephew has told me he doesn't want to. 
Now, my sister has called her mom and entire family to make me look like a controlling bitch and saying how I am trying to parent her son and teach him bad manners and not help <laughs> and not to help family. She's telling everyone I should give her control of the money because he because it's her son. So I'm at the asshole for standing my ground or refusing to give my sister access to her teenage son's money, even though he and I both think it's in his best interest to have responsible financial oversight. I'm wondering if I am since they really need it and may lose a lot without it. But my nephew said no, and it's his money. Too long, didn't read. My sister wants to take advantage of her son and use his money. I'm the one managing the account, and she demands I transfer control over to her so they can use the money for uh, real expenses. Update. So that's some additional info on why I am a custodian of the on the account. The account was opened when he was 15. His parents okay. would would always take money he was given for like Christmas and birthdays. I'm still on the account because he doesn't want me off it till he finishes school and can move away from his parents for good. Is this Makes person sense. an asshole? No. No. I feel like they're an asshole because they knew they weren't an asshole. When they wrote right. it. It's one of, it's one of they just wanted, they wanted back at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't, I feel like they're only not the asshole because I know how that feels to be like, the, the rest of your family be like, man, why are you not helping? It's like, but you shouldn't. But, yeah, that's... I feel like the baby knew uh, ahead of time. He knew exactly who his parents were, and he put another adult in charge of that money because he knew that they were irresponsible with money. And what do you know? They're in a situation where they have been irresponsible with money. Shocking. Talking to no one, actually. Right. Uh, here's a comment. Not the asshole. Your sister and her, and her husband are absolute garbage parents. Mm-hmm. The audacity to demand thousands of dollars for, of their child's money who doesn't even live with them anymore is straight up bananas. Mm-hmm. The awful entitlement to march to a bank and try to demand that child's money is pathetic and abusive. Uh, they quote something from the, the OP's post and they say, fight fire with fire on this one. Make sure Every ear that will listen knows that your nephew came to you to manage and protect their money and not the other way around. Make sure everyone knows that their 20 year oldish son now knows how bad they are with money. So much so that he needed and sought out his own external help with his money to avoid the mistakes that his parents have repeatedly made. What a great decision your nephew made to entrust you with their money. Absolutely brilliant. Stand your ground. Don't give up that money. Exactly. Now, see, this is where the funny part. I mean, I, I, my mind still isn't changed, but like, I, I get tired of them suggesting stuff that they that they really can't they can't suggest because she, they just clearly said like the rest of the family is on her back, and that's pretty much why she feels bad about it. Like her mother, which would be, I guess, uh, would, they, they had the same mom. Was like, hey, why, why don't you just give them the money? I, I hate when other people suggest what somebody else should do, but still not help. If you're yeah. suggesting that I suggesting that I just give up the money, then how come you should just help now, Mom? You give them the money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you give it to them. Uh, it's a little double up. Uh, not the asshole. This is literally why he asks you to help him. Mm-hmm. You would be the asshole if you cave. Any relatives who disagree do not have his best interest at heart. Mm-hmm. Well, how old is he? Junior in college normally means 18, 19, which would be an adult. In any case, his parents should shouldn't should not be stealing his money. I'd say the same thing if he was twelve and they wanted to dip into his college fund. The OP response: He's nineteen, but he does not want me off the account. And I've asked, he wants me to wait till he's done with college and can move away for good. Since right now he still has to come home for holidays and summer. He's not confrontational at all, and they would try to use that to take his money. Man, I wouldn't ever go back to that house because they are going to just basically try to rob you. Why are you sleeping? Of all exactly. the people that play. Mm-hmm. No way. No. With they nah. broke ass. <laughs> With the <a> broke ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Am I the asshole for telling my mother in law if she expects me to get a DNA test for my son? Then I want her to get a DNA test for my husband. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you should do what you was doing. <laughs> I, 30 female, met my husband Stephen, 32, at a as at a friend who was who was wow, at a friend who was cousin party. We instantly connected and started dating not long after. We've been happily married for five years now and have a former third son. I meet my mother in law at his uncle's funeral. Wow, 
He asked me to attend, attend in support for of him. Before he left, his cousin warned me about mother-in-law. He said she wasn't the nicest person and she had impossibly high standards to meet and can be judgmental. So don't take it personally as she's like that with everyone. I did ask my husband and he agreed that mother-in-law can be quite judgmental, but not to worry that he'll be there for me. I felt like they gave me the sugar-coated version of her because she was terrible. She made a scene about bringing a stranger to a family family funeral, but my husband cut her off and said the aunt, who was his, his uncle's widow, said he could, had said he could. She spent the rest of the funeral giving me nasty looks and making passive aggressive comments. She made a scene at our wedding, but that's a different story on its own. But after minimal contact with mother-in-law, my husband eventually got around to telling her that I was pregnant. I expect her to be angry and have, and have a go at him, but she surprised us both and was the complete opposite. She was excited about being a grandmother. She was congratulating us. Her attitude did a complete turn and I grudgingly allowed her to visit. When it was time to give birth to my son, she wanted to see my son being born. But I refused. That's when the ugly side reared its head again and she caused a scene and was thrown out. Okay. I refused to let her visit us at my home. My husband agreed. She, she, but she rang crying and apologizing. She said she was just overwhelmed about being a grandmother and her emotions got the better of her. Against my better judgment, I relented and said, okay. When she first held him, she shocked. She looked at me and said he was beautiful. I went to the kitchen to get us a drink. And then I could hear my husband telling her to get out. I went back in. She started yelling. He needed to get the baby tested because he doesn't look like anyone in the family. Mm. He kicked her out. She took to the social media and told everyone that I cheated on my husband oh, and that my no. husband needs to get a DNA test to prove that he was the dad. Oh, no. She got a lot of attention for that. So I made my own post and said, I'll get a test when she gets a test for her son. That just made everything worse. She rang my husband and telling me to take it down. He just hung up on her. Everyone's divided and questioning my husband's paternity since he had such a strong reaction to it. <laughs> now even my husband is starting to wonder and making me feel I went too far. And I'm thinking, am I the asshole for saying that? Uh, yes, but a funny one. Uh, warranted. Yeah, warranted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you wrong, but you know you wrong, and you know you said it because you was gonna be wrong. So yeah, she was being a little nah, scam. Yeah. You know, you know, I have, you have a, a mother in law who, yeah, who clearly has some some mental health disorder that needs to be addressed, and uh, you hope you hope better for. Her. And uh, I don't see anybody who would who would say to the contrary or whatever. Uh, my husband just, what? Okay, man. <laughs> Comments on uh, Reddit be going places, y'all. That's why I, I try to be I try to be real pick and choosy about which ones I grab. Uh, OP, there's a comment here that says something along the lines of obsessive DNA testing. Basically, basically birthday, Christmas, so on and so forth. Now on to everything. If your husband is questioning it, just get it done. I know, baby. I know it hurts that he thinks this, but the seed's already been planted. Might as well let it grow. Let that seed become a weed. Once the test comes in, he'll feel like a heel for believing and believing it and grovel a little bit. Sometimes it's better to catch the bug with honey rather than vinegar. Man, there was a lot of adages being stated in that particular one. <laughs> this is where you this is where you can milk it for all you got. You do this DNA test, this something will always have you'll off. <laughs> this is something this is something you will always have ammunition over. She makes a post about something to just rile you up and get the family involved. All you gotta do is be like, oh. Is this like the time I needed a DNA test because you slandered me with your lies? <laughs> remember, remember that came up false. Do I need to fact check this one too? Boom. Works in your favor. Works in your favor because she's then trying to look for the roots, look for other roots that are too hard to pull out. Mama's playing checkers, so you might as well be playing chess. The internet is wild, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, last one. Am I the asshole for not agreeing with my roommate to never have sex in our dorm room? Hmm. When you're young, you, you, you got to go where the feeling goes sometimes. 
but you also will put a person out to have like nowhere to go. We had an interesting setup in our dorm. It was a suite mm. with no kitchen, basically. So it was like a condo, a two story condo. We had a living room and the bathroom consisted of the entire hallway. So nobody could be occupying the entire bathroom. There was like a water closet and then the sinks were in the hallway and then the shower was on the opposite side of the water closet. Um, but like if w- w- my roommate was having a gentleman over, I really didn't have nowhere to go. Thankfully, I had friends across the parking lot in another building. But like, I think it's fair to make some sort of arrangement of like, not too frequently or like, give me a heads up so I could have somewhere to go. Because like the furniture in our living room was like waiting room furniture. So it wasn't like I could go <laughs> sleep on the couch. Yeah. I literally had to like, go across campus to go to bed. Hmm. Well, let's see. For some background, my 18 female roommate, 18 female, is an international student from China. And this is both of our first semester in university. She's polite, reserved, and very sheltered to the point where she gasped when she saw there was a there were condom dispensers in the hall. I often worry that I'm trampling over her politeness with my more assertive attitude. This weekend I left for winter break. She decided to visit family friends for a couple of nights meaning she'd be gone Friday and Saturday night and get back on Sunday. With this knowledge, I decided to invite my friends with benefits, friend with benefits over. We fucked, cuddled, and then I kicked him out because two people cannot fit in the twin XL and that motherfucker snores. Mm. The next night, Sunday, I was packing for home and and talking to a friend on the phone, and he mentioned the previous night's encounter and joked how about how my stuffed animals were traumatized. A couple of days later, I get a text from my roommate that I copied and pasted below. Ooh, this is, here we go. Sorry to bother you over break. I know we've talked about allowing friends in the room before we did not, in the, I know we've talked about allowing friends in the room before, but we did not talk about having boyfriends over. And I would appreciate if you don't have sex in the room as it is my space too. Merry Christmas. But you wasn't, but you wasn't there. You wasn't going to be there. <laughs> While I understand some people aren't comfortable with the topic of sex at all, we should we shouldn't judge them for that. I got to be honest in that I'm judging her for this. There was never there's never been a time where I asked to her, asked her to leave, stay stay out so I could have sex and I wouldn't ever dream of being that gross. Oh, excuse me, that gross roommate who brings a partner back while their roommate is sleeping. I also know that sex can have a smell, so I made sure to burn mm-hmm. our green upon mm-hmm. scented candle. I text her back that while I understand she's uncomfortable with it, I'm not breaking any rules that I could, that could get us in trouble, not doing anything that affects her belongings. And it's my room as much as hers, her room, meaning we can't just ban activities. The other deems bad unilaterally. (laughs) I reassure her that I wouldn't ever kick her out for sex or make her an unwilling witness. All she texted back was that she is willing to discuss this with the RA present. Hmm. We got back from break. I think it's completely ridiculous and entitled that she wants to control my actions that she deems bad when mm-hmm. it's both my room too. And she isn't even, and she isn't even there. However, mm-hmm. I'm also wondering if I'm both breaking some sort of roommate code about sex and making her uncomfortable by forcing sex into her life and thus being an asshole. And I've actually put in the a room. <laughs> wow. And I've actually put in a roommate transfer request due to her sleep, sleep yelling. Wow. Oh, I, that, must be some, that must be something weird now. But according to the housing office, my request is low ranking due to the problem being solvable. What? I've tried seven plus, bra- so seven plus brands of earplugs and headphones. It's not solvable. So at this point, I'm just trying to make it work with what I have. So somewhere down the line, there must be a discussion about her uh, sleep yelling. Oh my God. Yeah, I think there's like, you could have a legitimate concern. Like, if I'm there, I really don't want you to have sex with dudes. I don't want you having people I don't know spending the night because my shit is in there. But like, you weren't there. You weren't going to be there. You, sh- you can't, you can't tell somebody not to have sex. For sure. As, as a person who has a couple of people in his house that talk in their sleep, they talk in their sleep. And I'll be like, what the fuck is y'all doing? Have somebody sleep yet. That's demonic. Oh my God. That's demonic. <laughs> <laughs> Yelling? 
I would throw some holy water on that bitch. <laughs> like, is your sleep paralysis demon tussling with you? What's going on? Yeah, that's crazy. Oh my gosh. Somebody responds. <clears throat> I mean, I was raised Christian and was deeply uncomfortable with the ideal of premarital sex my first year of college. But that doesn't mean I was allowed to dictate the sex lives of my roommates. What they did in our room while I wasn't around was none of my business. As long as they respected my belongings, right? Opie having sex in her own bed while her roommate is gone isn't putting her roommate in an uncomfortable situation. She's literally not there. It's a Republican situation. Like, you don't want to have an abortion. You don't have an abortion. You don't get to say that other people can't have abortions. Facts. Uh, ironically, I think she expected me to be a lot more, I guess, culturally similar to her than I am. I'm half Korean American, but I was raised super white. So the mm. first week of us <laughs> meeting was trying to relate to me about Asian stuff and me having no idea what she was talking about. Oh, their sure roommate's Asian probably comes from like a super strict background. Huh? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She said she said she's a. I think she said she's a Chinese, mm-hmm. a Chinese exchange student. In, in fact, uh, oh. yes, she's from China. Yeah. So, yes, it, maybe it's a cultural thing that she's missing in translation, but like you, you in America, baby. <laughs> I'm glad that, that the OP recognized that she's like super white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I know I came up. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, I think it's a thing of like if you were in China and there was some social norm that everybody was used to, you would kind of have to fall in line. So I think it's kind of the same thing over here. Exactly. That's just what it is. Those are your Am I the Assholes for the week. Uh, let's delve into the realm of entertainment as before we uh, wrap everything up. Uh, like I said, I've gotten good at writing lists, people. <laughs> I'm doing that too. Like uh, with the award show, the award show season among us, when I see things that I haven't seen yet, I'm putting an actual list in my phone of things I would, I would like to see. Well, speaking of awards, I watched uh, a, a movie that then turned out to win a, a golden globe or two uh, a few days after I watched it. And that is the holdovers. That's on Peacock. Like Dan recommended that last week. And I watched that movie with Ness and we really, really both enjoyed that movie. Uh, Paul Giamatti and uh, is, is, is the main uh, character in that, in that movie. <laughs> It's very it's great. good. It was very great. good. I was like, oh, check that out. Divine, to be, over, so. divine, I think is how you say it. Uh, her dialect work is incredible. I'm, I, I can't stop raving about her in general, especially the work that she did on um, High Fidelity. <laughs> uh, and we were robbed <laughs> of a second season that was focused on her character. Oh. Uh, but I, I go up for her in Bruh, all ways. That Boston accent. Yeah, she was great. Fire. It was so she good. Was great. And I just was like, yeah, it's crazy. I, I checked out Blue Eyed Samurai. Uh, again, I told you I listened to Kind of Funny. Nick, Scar- Nick Scarpino is a guy with Kind of Funny. He talked about watching Blue Eyed Samurai with his wife. And I was like, okay, if it's, if it's a bang like that, I'll give it a go. So, and anim- no, it's not an anime, it's animated. It actually looks more like uh, Japanese watercolor. Hmm. That's kind of what the, the, the what it looks like, but it's about a, uh, a, a half white. Uh, Samurai, uh, who is trying to find their father to kill him. <laughs> so that's just what's going on with that, and it's great. I uh, really enjoyed it, and uh, so you might want to get down to get down on that one. Uh, suggested by Aunt Carol at the end. In the end of the world, I've watched basically I think just two whole episodes. Of that. that that shit is a full thirty minutes. No commercials, you know what I'm saying? Netflix 30 minutes, not no bullshit, not no 22 minutes like some shows, full 30 minutes. And uh, so uh, we, we only got two episodes in, but they were fantastic. Vanessa watched it with me and was like, yo, we got to watch that together. And I'm like, no problem. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely going to get down it, with that. It really caught me uh, off guard about how good it was. Uh, yeah. What is it called? Carol and the End of the World. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's animated, but. Uh, that don't mean nothing else. The story is fantastic. It's literally uh basic premise is uh the world is gonna end in about seven months. And uh there's nothing that there's nothing that can be done about it. And so most people are out there, L I V I N living. And Carol is not most people. She, she, and, she just uh, wants to she wants to continue living like being normal, like going to Applebee's <laughs> and going to the yeah. grocery store. Just because like it's 
not to give too much away, but like she does, she doesn't have like a love interest or like that's not what she yeah. wants in life. She just wants to keep on um keep on living her life. Her, her mother and father, that little situation cracks me up so much. It it made me laugh, but it also touched me when I when he, you know, he gets that scene with him talking to the captain, right? Yeah. That is Nick, I'm telling you, you you you, you I think you would I would appreciate at least that that particular bit of that that particular bit it's of story on the time. list officially. Yeah. Uh, what if season two is, uh, is out on uh, Disney Plus? If you fuck with Marvel shit and, uh, and want to get down to get down, what if is uh, just a fun jaunt? They do real good stuff with that, and uh, I enjoyed all the episodes of it. And would tell you to get down with a what if season two. And I guess somewhere in there, uh, and maybe I just missed it. They announced season three, so more to come. So excellent. Get your what if on. Uh, it is uh, available. Echo is out on uh, Disney Plus right now as well, yeah. and on Hulu. It's uh, rated M for Mature. That is the next Marvel little thing. It's uh, five episodes. They released all five episodes at once, so you can watch all of that right now. Just binge Echo. I have not watched it yet. Just letting you know it's available. Uh, I got my ass back on Mario Kart last night, and uh, turned out I finished the whole game. <laughs> I rode credits Damn. on Mario Kart out of nowhere. I was like, I didn't know Mario Kart had credits. Right? <laughs> so, Turns out, yeah, I, I have raced all ninety six tracks of Mario Kart, if, if you if you if including the DLC, and uh, yeah, get down to get down, people. Uh, I started like a dragon guy. Then the man who erased his name. That is a uh, Yakuza game. Just a little. They call it a guy then because it's just a little side story. It's a uh, free on Game Pass uh, if you are on Xbox, and I am loving that game. Turns out, I like I, I I have played a couple of games in the, in that vein before the Judgment games, Judge Eyes, if you were in Japan, and uh, so this is another game in that in, by that company and kind of, kind of plays like that little action adventure kind of fight beat 'em up situation, and it's great. I'm gonna reach behind me and pull out multiple records. <laughs> <laughs> this is for my video watchers, which is basically only patrons. These are the things I've been listening to this week. This came in. I am on what's called the Interscope Vinyl Collective. And so they send the record every month. I've only done it for the last few months. This is Juice World's Goodbye and Good Riddance. This is a song, this is an album my kids love. But there's a song on there, uh, End of the Road, that I I love myself. And so I regularly uh listen to that. And they were like, hey, if you can get this version of it, which is gorgeous, it's like numbered, it's you know shiny and it's on this gorgeous yellow lemon yellow vinyl maybe more highlighter yellow depending on your eye situation so i go gets down with that one it is aesop rocks integrated tech solutions this is it's just look at this look at this shit it's gorgeous <laughs> look at that oh wow look at that it's and like then, a pamphlet here's the, joke. Here's, the, here's the whole here's the joke they make it look like you have a a a a, a, a a file cabinet folder. Oh, nice. To hold the vinyl. Oh, nice. And the nice. vinyl is, of course, this gorgeous, just pure ass Coke white looking vinyl. And it's so nice. It is very nice. Dope. And of course, I fuck with Aesop Rock a whole lot and always have. And this might be, and I don't want to say it quite yet, but it might be his best album ever. Just in the pocket, wrapping his ass off. Uh, listening to Open Mike Eagles, uh, recent season of what has happened, what had happened was, had me going back and listen to a bunch of Soulquarian's work, and so that meant I've whipped out Mama's Gun. Yes, the Vinyl Me Please version of that. I feel like during the pandemic, Nick uh, did a, a Twitter uh, listen along to this album. Sure did. It was like was that so anniversary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I very much love that album. But this particular this particular pressing of this album sounds so good. So if y'all can get your hands on that version of it, highly recommend. But again, if we're talking about the Soul Cranes, that means we're talking about JD, and that means we was talking about Common, like Water for Chocolate, my favorite Common album, my favorite Common song, uh, Nog Champa, Aphrodisiac for the World is on there, and that's a JD beat, and he absolutely murdered it, and I love, love, love that album and that song. And of course, it led to the whole discussion was about the Roots' first four albums, and the last of those four was Things Fall Apart. Yes. That's, my nice, that's my nice box copy, so a little three LP joint. And absolutely love this album. Uh, this is the ver- this is the album cover I bought when it originally came out. I went for that mm-hmm. particular cover. Now you know what? No, on the CD I have the one that's Ace of Spades. This album had like four different of uh, uh, covers oh, yeah. when it first released, 
And uh, one of them is like, like I said, a car holding a space. And then I found on Discogs, there's a version that you can swap these out. Oh, like my uh, beautiful and dark so and twisted At some family. point, I'm going to pay that gold <laughs> to get that version of it. Just so I can have the proper version of it. I just hit the shit out of that damn Christmas tree. Wowzers. <laughs> for y'all, you know, for those who see it, my, my folk here, and of course you the, you my patrons. Vanessa made that in pottery, ceramics, ceramics, uh some years back. And so I just was like, I'm about to pull that out for my my set dressing. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> is that an octopus next to the tree? It is. That is a that is an octopus upon um upon my my Great British Bake Off style cake plate. It's not Great British nice. Bake Off, but you know, <laughs> it is it is a cracker that I have <laughs> hanging out back there on my table. Nice. <laughs> but that is my my entertainment for the week. What have y'all been watching, listening to, getting down with? I'm in a. a uh, I've got a little bit of the moody blues, so I'm comfort watching some shit. So I've been in kind of a Sex in the City show hole. Oh. I'm, I'm finishing the final episode of the series, but I watch it. I've watched the entire series uh, in every decade of my life since it came out. And it's so interesting to watch it now in my 40s because I'm the exact age that Samantha was when the series ended right now. And... um. I, I've i done several different versions of my watch. Like I watched the second movie and then went directly into And Just Like That. Um, or I've watched the whole series and then watched the first movie or, you know, whatever. Uh, so I have always hated the way that people talked shit about Carrie in the afterlife of the series. But now that I'm watching it and, and she's 35 and I'm like, oh yeah, she's kind of a horrible friend and mm. not that great of a person. And like, she yelled at people a lot. Uh, and I, I think it's completely inappropriate for adults to yell at each other, especially adults that are in romantic relationships with one another. And like, she never should have ended up with Big. And I feel like the Russian was her guy and they could have worked out their differences because because the problem that she had with Big in the second movie was that he was a homebody because that was always his jam. He was like 15 years older than her. He wasn't trying to be in the streets like that. And the Russian was was the dude to be taking her out into the streets and shit like that. So it's been very interesting. I might just start Insecure over after this because I, I, I jumped into Insecure at like season three a couple of months ago. Um, and so I'm going to just go back and finish. I'm, I'm, I'm in like Condola just got pregnant <laughs> land. So I think I'll finish it out and then go back to the beginning. Um, if you listen to my show, you know, I'm doing an Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy filmography watch through and I'm about halfway through, um, Candy Cane Lane currently. Very much. I enjoyed that movie. I it's like it's fun. Movie. It was just long and I started it kind of late last night. You ever watch, uh, the Carrie Diaries? Yes, I loved it actually. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 not that I was, I'm like I know my Sex in the City because I, I know, yeah. I know of it. But that one, Vanessa watched, and I kind of remember watching a bit of that. So that was yeah, cute. I loved the yeah, yeah. Diaries. Um, yeah, it was real cute. Yeah. And I'm Sophia Rob. What made you say? Let me give Eddie Murphy his jewels, and let me watch his uh, works. Um, because I saw the teaser for the new um, Beverly Hills Cop. And realized that I had never watched the Beverly Hills Copses, and I oh. started there. And yeah. I was like, "Oh, I've, I've got quite a few holes in his filmography." Because if you know me, you know that I don't really mess with movies that uh, were made before the modern politically correct era. And a handful of his stuff from the eighties and early nineties falls into those categories for me. Like I didn't rock with Forty Eight Hours at all. It's, it's yeah, it's a it's a little Tough much. Lot. Nick Nolte a bit much in that movie. So I yeah. Hear <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like I I loved I loved the first Beverly Hills Cop. I thought the other two were just okay. Exactly. Um, but the first one was great, and uh, I uh, feel like I never saw Mr. Church, but it's in one of my uh, streaming services, and it's over. So like it was like, do you want to watch it again? <laughs> so either somebody <laughs> watched it or I watched it, and I just didn't remember watching it. The banana in the tailpipe scene. Now I really, I, oh I know it's homophobic as fuck. I know the I'm reference, twisted. but I've been saying don't fall banana in the tailpipe for my whole years. life. Yeah, yeah. 
And from that, from that, just from that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I got it from my brother. And now I know that's exactly yeah. where he got it. Cause I was, I was talking to him on New Year's Day and telling him, I was like, I've, I had never seen the Beverly Hills Copses. And he was just like, Nicole. <laughs> like he was so disappointed at me. Like, how did we grow up in the same? <laughs> Cause he forced me to watch a lot of shit. Like my brother is a huge Trekkie. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is like my my middle nephew's middle name is from actually the Star Trek universe. I'll say it off mic. Uh, but like I was forced to watch several seasons and movies of Star Trek. My brother's a huge like Godzilla oh. fan. So I had to watch all that stuff, too. So I really don't know how I avoided the Beverly Hills cops because I'm sure. But like the Golden Child, I've seen hundreds of times. Yes. Uh, my sweet. <laughs> yeah. Fuck with it. Yeah. yeah what about but you, I also man? think that uh, Eddie Murphy is uh, underratedly one of the greatest actors of our time. So that's uh, the other reason why I'm doing the watch. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll start off with uh, the books I've been listening to. Um, I'm finishing up for the second time. Um, Blaze, that's technically by Richard Bachman, but it's a, uh, of course, it's a Stephen King book. Um, and, Right now, I'm also listening to The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. Um, usually, like right before bed um, or after I drop off the boys, I'll get back to listening to the, the audio books I listen to. But um, I love Stephen King books. Like, you I always have. I, I listen to them all. <laughs> when they come out, it's, um, man. I think what always um when when I was a kid I thought he only wrote horror. And yeah. like when it when it comes down to it, the one the the ones that, that aren't scary and the ones that are like with kids in them are always so good. Um I wish like um it's this one called um The Girl Who Loved Um Tom Gordon. And I've listened to I don't know how many different um people talk about the book but they never talk about if she died or not at the end of the book and i've had like conversations with people who read the book before and they're like oh yeah she she died and they never talk about that and i'm just l- looking forward to the day when i can talk to somebody else about if she died or not um fair as far as like tv goes it was like um like odds and ends, but I guess the heavy would be um, watching uh, Miss Marvel. Um, I, I picked that up and trying to uh, get that done. And of course, the other heavy is um, I'm going to finish a pup called Scooby Doo. I'm going to run through all those episodes <laughs> um, on Tubi and, and, and watch those. Um, other than that, it's like with so, so many different things. Um, like with the strike and with the, with the two strikes, it hasn't really been a lot of stuff that to watch to me because like I I I, I watch stuff until I I grind the gears on it I I pick it up and I don't stop until it's done so um, it's been kind of low on that on that end um, oh I, I watched the bookie on no book is it the book your bookie on um on HBO Max. That I finished that I watched that um and finished that really, really quickly. I of course I watched rap shit. Um because shit I haven't really talked about all I watched for uh for for a few weeks now. Um but yeah, that was I guess those are the heavies. Um I've been playing Robocop a little bit more. I play I like I'm really, really at the beginning. Um it's a cool game. Um I I'm notorious for hating first person games. I don't like them at all, but with RoboCop, it makes sense to me because what other view would RoboCop have? Like, um, but it's like this cool little thing where, um, instead of going to the next mission, you can like do little shit around the the precinct. And it was one where like a bunch of people are standing in line and you got to, um, answer questions. I thought that part was really fun today. That was either today or yesterday. I was doing that. Uh, I did that in the demo. And the dude come up talking about his dog, and I just like that's the fun little weird little little I don't know quest. Yeah, I, I like <laughs> I like stuff like that. Like um, it's it's right on my it's right up my alley. I, I love RoboCop. 
Like I, I, I like games, but it's like, um, it just got to be a certain type of game that got me in. Like I got uh, the Last of Us Part Two. It should be coming because I got charged for it, so <laughs> I, should, I should be getting it pretty soon. Yeah, it comes out come, comes out next Friday. I um, I don't know. Oh, well, one I would definitely wait to, to for your for you to report in and tell me like. Is this somebody I need to be getting getting like immediately? Or is this somebody I can nah, wait on? I'm a, I'm going to say no right off the bat because like they double dipping, but I love it though. Yeah, like I can I can yeah. say with my with my head in my heart like no, nah, I don't buy it because I feel like fuck it, I shouldn't have bought it, but I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's like I was going to start the other one, but the mechanics are going to be different because they change them for the um usually for for the next generation and stuff and. Um, I think I'm ready to play it again. Like it's yeah. been it's been a few years, and I know what's going. To happen. I have not finished. I have not finished the remake. Not the remake. Remake. What is it? remake or remaster? Remake. The one you know, the one they put in PlayStation Five. Yeah. yeah, I ain't finished that one. I own it. I have it. I started it. I just never finished it. And also, I got to get new PlayStation sticks because my I got such a drift in the in the, on my on my sticks. But then they announced, or they didn't really announce. I guess it just leaked today. That apparently it's a, a upgraded uh, controller out there with a better battery life. Yeah, but it, so I'm is like, that only in Canada? Because what, from what I was saying, it was like uh, that's just where the price in mm-hmm. that ain't nothing ever going to be only Canada when it comes. It's, that's, it'll, it'll be a North American situation. That's just where the first place it got prices at. It'll it'll get its way down here eventually. So I, I just need to be patient, wait for the better controller to make its way, you know, to shelves down here, and then I'll hopefully replace some sticks and get get a, get a new set. Man, I need to buy. A bunch of PlayStation Four remotes because my kids are yeah. be, be fucking those boys up. <laughs> just, just, just some new ones. Uh, oh, uh, uh, newcomers is back. In case y'all want to get out of the podcast, Lauren Lapkus and uh, uh-huh. uh, Nicole Byer. This uh, series they they're doing Batman. Oh. All the Batman. Well, a bunch uh-huh. of the Batmans, which is fun. So they did Batman sixty six, which I had no interest in, but I still listen to the episode because it's a fun episode to listen to. Uh, and then Paul F. Thompson's on talking about it, so that's kind of dope. Yeah, I'll, I'll... and this week was uh, eighty nine. Yeah, and it's fun that Nicole didn't like it, but by the time she got to the got to the end of the episode and the guest was on there so much, he was she was like, "I'm gonna have to watch this again with different eyes." And I'm like, "Bro, Batman eighty nine is great, yeah. but it's great for different reasons, different people. It's great to me because." You know, Prince is all through the soundtrack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Made a whole album about that shit. And it's great to me because Jack Nicholson kind of absolutely bodies that role, which is weird. Most I ended definitely. up liking Michael Keaton, who I knew from other more comedic roles Mr. before Mom. that. And he, so, it's my favorite Batman. He is my favorite Batman. Nice. I think it's tongue in cheek enough. It it gives fan service to the original television series enough. Like I happen to think that. I, I don't love the Nolan trilogy. I think it's a little bit too dark and I think it veered away from like pow, bang. <laughs> like I don't recognize the Dark Knight Batman. Yeah, yeah, I, I so. love that, that Batman pretty much for the same reasons. Like when I seen that, um, the soundtrack out in a while, like that was probably one of the only times I picked up an album, I bought it and then I realized how much I paid for it afterwards. <laughs> like usually when when I buy albums, I, I usually the top I'll pay is six dollars. Except for when we were in yeah. Detroit, I was like, "Hey, we on a, a dude a dude's night out." <laughs> but um, <laughs> but usually the the top I'll pay is six dollars for an album, and I was just like, I had to have that because it, I mean it's a dope Prince album. It's a dope Prince scandalous album. Has nothing, scandalous has nothing nothing to do with Batman. It's just a sexy ass song. See, Party man goes. I got. Oh, I have. I have both uh, Bat Dance and, and Party Man on twelve inch over here. And uh, Delvin sent me recently a uh, uh, Pr- Prince the Hits uh, vinyl. And so I got which one? All three? The, is it all three? No, I, th- I think it's just the first part. Part, part one. Because there's the hits one, there's the hits two, and then there's the B sides. I'm positive it's just the hits one. Okay. Uh, we gonna double check right quick. I only need to have like "Damn You" and um. No, I just mm-hmm. need "Damn You" on on vinyl. I don't need uh, "Money Won't Matter" to don't matter tonight because I'll just cry every day. I cannot listen to that yeah. song without crying. Like I love all. "Damn You." That's one of my faves. Like, yeah, I, 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 I could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's 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 the it's the hits one. Uh, Does cry pop life soft and wet. 
Yeah. I feel for one. you. Uh, let's go crazy. 99. Nothing compares to you. Adore, which is my, that, that, that's my, that's my, Adore that's, is my shit. Uh, that's pretty much my one as well. Um, they're making a Prince Broadway musical mm. and everybody was like, who asked for this? And I'm like, yeah. hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. Depending, and I talked to Reggie and he knows some of the people who are on creative. Um, I My concern is that none of like Prince's friends are on creative. Like people who have, a, a, you know, a personal relationship with him as well as strong references. Yeah. Like some music journalists that we all know. But like, Let's go crazy is the opening number of my dreams. Of my dreams. I would like if I sat down in the theater and no overture and I just heard mm, dearly beloved, I would lose my shit. Makes sense. Yes. That uh that hits number one ends with seven, of course, and that's I know that's Nick's joint. And yep. so I'm like, that's a good that's a way to get a good way to end the hits volume one or part one. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, oddly enough, I've been listening to Prince lately, so I mean that because of that, and so that's funny that Batman comes up on, on that podcast and like said, uh, "Yeah, you should be fucking with." That's a good, sh- good podcast. Lauren Lavikas and, and Nicole Byer are great together, and uh, the the off season of that show is when they did the Fast and Furious series, and it was Gabrus because uh, Lavikas had just had a kid, so she was uh, away for most of that season. And I love the Fast and Furious movies, and I love John Gabrus, but. That podcast was not right without uh, those two uh, female voices on it, and it's like I think they bring so much to the table, and I think you might enjoy newcomers. Yeah, that's the thing. I guess that made that kind of weird is they discover it's called newcomers. He was all in for uh, for that. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. That's, thank you, man. See, somebody noticed. Uh, but you know what it is. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show wherever possible. Basically, that means go uh, rate us on Spotify. Review us if you can be so kind on Apple Podcasts. You can also go do that on YouTube because I'm trying to be good about putting the audio up on YouTube. And like I said, if you are a patron, you can see the video of us doing this on YouTube. Uh, it's not, well, yeah, the video's on YouTube, but it's unlisted. You can't see it unless you got the link. And you ain't got the link unless you're a patron at the $5 or five dollar tier. No, there's no above anymore. It's one in five now. Got to remember that. <laughs> so that's just what it is. Um, uh, you, yeah, yeah. Scratch us on YouTube. I ain't really worried about Twitter no more. I've been trying to just not even interact with it. But so it's there, but I ain't really getting down with it. Uh, if you want to support the show financially, have a few more stress away. Join us over on Patreon with members at the, uh, at the, I guess technically at the $1 and $5 tiers now, uh, get extra content each month and early access to new shows. We got merch over at tpublic.com slash user slash stage country milk. All one word. Go buy a shirt. Go buy a wallet. I don't know if they have wallets. They made that one up. Go buy a notebook. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. I like the way the notebooks look. Feel free to give us a call. 216-264-6311. That's 216-264-6311. We'd certainly love to hear from you and hear from you. We have, but not. For stage crunch milk, we heard from you from uh, for Crimp TCA. And because Crimp TCA won't be back for a little bit, I might as well find out what the hell this is. Because we got I got an email that's like, somebody answer your question on, <laughs> on Crimp TCA. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, because we because we did a um episode of the American Baking the great, Show. Great American Baking Show holiday 2023 special. And someone I guess responded to the question over there. The question was, What's your favorite holiday bake? Mm. Let's see who answered this question. It is Bev. Who oftentimes answers our questions on that show? If you are listening, to, if, if you don't listen to Crimp TCA, know that we have people over there to listen to us and and respond to us nicely. <laughs> uh, and her response to this question, or their response to the question, because I have no idea. It's just a little bitty picture. I don't know what's going on. I know Bev gives the name, but you know, it may not be. They may not identify by that. Mello Macarona. It's a Greek cookie dipped in honey syrup, mm. sprinkled with chopped walnuts and cinnamon. And or mm. chocolate peanut butter pie. I make one of those myself for the holidays. Cinnamon rolls, gingerbread cake, pumpkin cheesecake. Those are mm. solid, solid holiday bakes to make with. Said I make a chocolate peanut butter pie myself, pretty regular. Uh, I will be making a chocolate chip pie for Dr. King's birthday Monday because that's what I do every year for his birthday. <laughs> yes, I, I would like to try. Um, I'm pretty good at making biscuits. I seen a recipe where they just uh, rolled it out and make cinnamon rolls with it. Like um, oh, with no uh, with no uh, yeast, no leavening. Besides the baking soda, I guess. Yeah. Get down, get down. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've checked on everything. <laughs> everything has been settled up, people. Like, thank you so much. Uh, Nick, thank you for hanging out with us this this, this night. You know I'm saying I, I, I called Nikki in very late and was like, I know it's late. <laughs> if you're trying to get down, please do. And and she so uh, obliged and came down, with, got down with the crew. And so, Always happy to join. I mean, my thank you so very much. I, I know we work together a lot, but you're still my favorite guest when you come on. Like it's a, it's always Aww. fun. Um, Thankfully, I don't mind the sound of my own voice, so I don't have to skip the week when I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> years of editing my voice actually at this point it helps me because I'm like I know what I sound like yeah and I know what I sound like so it's kind of like okay I get what's going on here I have an idea of, of, of yeah so I've I, begun I, to enjoy the sound of my own I, voice so I used to be yeah. um so good I used to be a avid like I listen to our I used to listen to our show every week I can't listen to my voice anymore I just can't do it yeah I can't do it <laughs> I listen to our show multiple times a week, but that's just because I produce it. So I want to hear how it sounds in many different places. But I, I enjoy, like, um, I swear, but I was listening to the one with or Chaffee. I swear it's always, like, situation where I'm like, God damn it, if I was there, this conversation would not go this way. Because it seems like... <laughs> but that's okay. It goes the way it needs to go in your absence. Yes, like I, I, and then you can always come in and be like, "This is what I would have did if you are so inclined." If not, I, I don't think I'm that type of dude anymore to be like, "Hey, this is what this I should have been <laughs> when I wasn't here, being all up in this shit." But that's how I feel like a listener, as a listener to most shows. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. and I know we drive people crazy too because we don't bust out the Google machine; we just be talking, and that's what makes I, that show I, great. I talk back to so many podcasts that I should be mm-hmm. on conversations with, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it, like, now hold on. Like, as if they can hear a damn thing I'm saying, yeah. but that's just mm-hmm. how the brain functions, yeah. and that is what it what it yeah. is. Uh, our missing man is Lunchbox 2099. Not missed for anything bad this go around. That's nice. Isn't that lovely? Right. We're to go kick right. with his people. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we're, we're grateful for that, and, 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 and he'll be back in the saddle hopefully next week. Nothing to it. Uh, May the Browns win. This weekend. Uh, <laughs> that is, of course, the 216 zone. It's Tatum. Hey, well, I think we did. I think we saw racism again, guys. What do you think? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we saw racism. <laughs> uh, you should be listening to What's the Tea? New episode dropped this week. Uh, this last week is the time by the time you hear this. I have no mm-hmm. idea what, whatever could happen next week. It, Me neither. So there you go. It can be another one up. It may not be another one up. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we promise once a month anything more than that is gravy. RuPaul's Drag Race is back, so yeah, I I've seen this on MTV dropping. Now. Yeah, so I'll be dropping that on our Patreon. It's uh, probably going to be there Friday morning, but when you're listening to this, that will be past tense, but that's for our Patreon subscribers. So hopefully we'll be able to consistently do that once a week. All three of us also do a show called Crimpetition. It's a great British Bank Off podcast. It's very good. I'm very proud of it. And even now, weeks since we put an episode out, it ain't doing numbers, but it's doing numbers. I love it. I, same. <laughs> love I it. I don't religiously check it, but every now and again, I'll be like, oh, yeah, let me go look at that right quick. I'm like, okay, cool. And again, like I said, got the email out of the blue that's like, go, go, somebody get, answer your question. Go look at it. I'm like, okay, Spotify, settle down, baby. <laughs> got you. Uh, I am the Interstellar 713. You've just been podcasting. I know you loved it. We'll catch you next time. Peace. What happened to your ass? It used to be beautiful.